Hey, how's everybody doing? You see, I'm shaved again, huh? I needed to shave. I look younger and I look thinner. Praise God. Glory to the Father, says Bridge by the name. What the heck happened here? What? Hey, guys, I look younger and I look thinner. My face. What's going on here? Why do I look so thin? Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Good to see you guys. How's everybody doing? The whistle, huh? What do you make? I'm making beauties. Yeah, I know. Thank the Lord for that. I need to get leaner though. Look at that, man. Look, look, look at that, Jeremy. I'm still lean. Do you see that? What do you make? You can even see my neck. It's like, what's up? What do you make? You're making so beauties. What are you making, man? Shaking, bacon. What's up, man? Why like this, man? Why you like this? Why like this, man? I'm not politically correct. People don't like me, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> People, they don't like me too much, man. Why like this? Why like this, man? I said, man, I don't know. Should I? I don't know. I'm just... But this is this shirt is like super big on me, and I pray it'll say big on me. Uh, yes. Hey, uh, George, why would an omnipotent God allow a whore like you to bark? Why would an omnipotent God allow a whore to give birth to you? George, you're a whore. Your mother's a whore. So why would an omnipotent God allow a whore like you to exist? I don't know, George. I'm wondering. So can you tell your whore mother she's proof that God exists because it's got to be God to allow a whore like you to manifest? Or so, man. Oh, shaking, bacon, man. George, you are a whore. You know that, right? We don't respect your mother. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> we haven't even started their manifesting. Oh, man, why are you like this, man? Yes, thank you. These guys, they they were given birth by female dogs in heat in the streets that the Shia mounted, not humans. And they were found in the streets, and then human beings adopted them. Shaking, bacon, man. What's up, man? Why like this? Yep. If they had their way, they'd kill us all. They would kill us, behead us, and get rid of us. You know, you should see the death threats we get. The death threats I've been getting. As you can see, I'm afraid. I'm shaking. I'm shaking. I'm scared. I'm hiding. Oh, yeah, Ron. Sucks being you. Losing 100 pounds is like losing a pound because I hear you're an obese whale, like you're a fat cow. You're like about a thousand pounds, so you got 900 to go. Anyway, everyone ready? What's up, Rob Christian? Keep robbing people thinking you're a Christian. Are we ready, guys? I'm waiting for a few minutes for everyone to uh, settle. Yeah, I'm scared, Levi. Can't you see I'm shaking? Brethren, Muslims, come look for me, please. Come look for me. See what's going to happen. You guys, I'm shaking. I pray that the Lord delivers one of you into my hands. Glory to the Father, Son, Spirit. We'll see. We'll see when I see you guys, okay? What do you make? What's up, Crystal? How you doing? What do you make? We're waiting a few minutes to give everyone time because, you know, the dog's going to manifest. Like George, that whore, he manifested, right? He started manifesting because his mother neglected him through mountain streets when she was doing muta. What's up, Ishu? What are you trying to say? I'm as old as your dad? I had to shave, man. Look at that. Pray I get leaner, man. What's up, brother? Shake and break it, man. We got a lot to discuss. We got a lot to discuss. I have a lot of clips to play. But I'm waiting because you know how it works. We begin. I'll share the rules and the people will start manifesting. They'll start manifesting. So they won't respect the rules. And then I'm going to cuss them out. I'm going to insult them. I'm going to humiliate them. And then they're going to blame me because that's what narcissists do. Okay. Now, if you guys don't know. The tactics of narcissists. Narcissists will bully you, vilify you, abuse you, insult you. And then when you stand up to them and give them a taste of their own medicine, they then play the victim and vilify you. I know because I live with a narcissist. I learned about narcissism the hard way, sadly. So I'm used to these narcissistic tactics. That's why you guys have you paid attention even on Avery's live stream. When, and I don't like to go on with Avery because I don't want to disrupt. Let me be forthright with you. So I want you to know, and God sees my heart. May he purify my heart. May he purge my heart. I'm not saying this to say it, and I'm not lying. 
I do not like to go on other people's live stream and join them because I do not want to be the focus or take focus away from them because it's their time. It's their channel. They're the mouthpiece of the Holy Spirit. Let the Spirit work through them to glorify Christ if they're men and women of integrity, right? And besides, if I show up, the haters, the detractors who can't stand me will start slandering me saying, see, he wants attention for himself. And God knows my heart better than I do. May he give me the heart of Jesus. That's one reason why I don't like to go on, which is why I can't listen for too long. Because when I see the Muslims manifest and the Muslims change topics and the Muslims bring up irrelevant issues, I start losing my patience. I start manifesting and I want to cuss in Chaldean. And I want to cuss them out in the Chaldean language and cuss their mothers out in the Chaldean language. So I can't watch. I got to pull away. Right? So I brought that up because there was a point I was reading about Avery. There was something, right? I know, I know Rob Christian. Rob Christian takes one to no one, hater. There was a point I was trying to bring up. But anyway, I lost it because, yeah, all I can say is, that I forgot the point of Avery and God's logic. What was I trying to say, dude? I'm so stupid, man. Yeah, you see issue? They had you over time, huh? Thank you for... Now, by the way, are you Chaldean or Assyrian? We still don't know. Vanessa, why do you want me to debate people? I still don't know if you're Chaldean or Assyrian. What are you? Yeah, guys, mods control the demons. Now, I was talking about narcissism. What's up, Sargon? How are you, brother? I'm sorry I didn't get to send out notification on my phone or on Skype that I'm going live. By the way, like I said in Avery's channel, there is no difference. Assyrians and Chaldeans are one and the same, you hater. You see what she said? I'm half and half. Assyrians and Chaldeans were the same people. Same people were one. Anyway, point being, what was I trying to say? My point was, I'm used to narcissistic tactics. When you give them a taste of their own medicine, they play the victim so that they can make you look like a bully. It doesn't work with me, but it works for these effeminate queer baits. As you saw, you saw that fake atheist. You, you saw that in exchange I had with that fake atheist on Avery's channel who said, oh, I'm, I'm an atheist now in Saudi Arabia. You know the guy was lying through his teeth, right? You guys saw that, right? Do you guys saw that? Where he's supposedly an atheist, but he's now bringing up logical contradictions in the Trinity to discredit the Trinity. You saw that, right? And what did the effeminate queer baits, these fake Christians, these dogs do in the comment section manifest? Because they're so stupid and naive. These are the people. They'll get us killed because, oh, oh, give him a chance. He's sincere. No, you dumb effeminate queer baits. He's not sincere. He's not sincere. He wanted to ridicule and insult the Trinity. In fact, do you guys remember what I said yesterday? Do you not remember anything? Taqiyya, you got it, Ishum Shikha, so she got it. You remember I said that according to chapter 16, verse 106 of the Quran, and chapter 3, verse 28, you can deny you're a Muslim and you can lie to people in order to deceive people from what your true agenda is. We don't know who he is. We don't know his identity. Yeah, he'll say Muhammad is a pedophile in order to keep us off his scent. But I want him to show his face, show his face and his name and say it, because then he'll be killed. But hiding behind the screen and a fake name and saying that, that's typical Muslim tactics. You get my point? Typical Muslim tactics. He was arguing like a Muslim trying to show that the Trinity is incoherent. And yet you saw he wasn't intelligent because someone has got to be stupid to tell me, well, who created God when I just told you God created time, space, and place. If he brought time into being, that means he's timeless. Well, someone timeless has no beginning. That's a contradiction. You understand my point? So I, I don't fall for these gimmicks, but sadly we have Christians who are not mature. But guys, this is what you're going to do. We're going to mention the rules again. But here's what you're going to do. You will, if you love me for the sake of the Lord and believe God is using me, pray for me. Pray without ceasing. You prayer warriors that pray. God has gift you to pray for believers and unbelievers. 
cry out to the Lord for my daughters and I, ask the Spirit to transform me, to destroy my flesh completely, destroy the fruits of my flesh, transform me to become more like the Lord Jesus Christ and constrain me and seal me from not crossing the limit and show me what the limit is and not go beyond it and have mercy on me and be patient with me because I don't want to keep attacking people, insulting people, fighting with people. That's not what I look forward to. The first thing in the morning when I wake up isn't, who am I going to cuss out today? Whose mother will I insult? Which Mohammedan will I cuss out and insult their prophet? That's not how I begin my day. What I want to do is grow to love Jesus more, be more faithful to Jesus, read my Bible more, understand it more, obey it and live it out more, worship God more completely and finish the race. Right? But what are you going to do? So now let me repeat the rules because, you know, people are not going to respect the rules. No matter how many times I'm going to repeat the rules, they're not going to respect the rules. What's up, Jeet Kundo Apologetics? This brother also named his YouTube channel Jeet Kundo Apologetics in honor of me. He takes clips of my sessions and he uploads them. Support this brother. Do your part. All it takes is go there, subscribe, and hit the like button on the videos. He's doing his part. It's been a while I haven't seen him. So notice he calls it Jeet Kundo Apologetics because that's what I say my apologetics are based on. Jeet Kundo, the principle of Jeet Kundo. I Christianize it for the glory of the Father, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. So support this brother and other brothers and sisters who are doing their part. But here are the rules again. Now watch. I always begin by reminding people of the rules, right? In order to show you why they deserve that I cuss them out, insult them, humiliate them, and disrespect them. Andrew Dice, you need to get the out of here, buddy, with that fake name. Get Andrew Dice out of here, this pervert, with that fake name. Here are the rules. Now watch them disrespect us and disrespect our channel so I can disrespect them. So you feminine queer baits, you don't like my language? Get the out of here. I don't ask for your opinion. I don't care for your opinion, and I'll cuss you out. Here are the rules. Let's see who's going to respect the rules or disrespect the rules. So you're telling me you want me to disrespect you. There will be no pontificating. You're not going to come here and tell us what to do and sit in judgment of us and think you're better than us and more pious than us and more spiritual. You're not. We don't respect you. You're not going to ask irrelevant questions that are off topic. You're going to sit and listen, ask the Spirit to help you to focus. You're going to engage me by focusing on what I say by the grace of God's Spirit and answering the questions I ask you. And you're not here to try to get married. I know there's some desperate guys looking for godly women, but this is not Sam's Christian single ready to mingle, right? So may God keep us men pure and holy until marriage and save us from Jezebels and keep our sisters holy and pure until marriage and keep them from wolves, okay? Just want you to know that. I'm not here to get you married. So we have a lot of clips to share. I need you to stay focused and help me to help you. But are you guys noticing another pattern? Are you noticing that even Avery is losing his patience? Are you catching it? I've been noticing it. The Avery of a year ago who was very patient, that Avery is slowly disappearing. That Avery is slowly withering and dying. A new Avery is coming to the forefront. An Avery who has no patience, an Avery who will now resort to making fun, insulting people, and blocking them. This happens to all of us. See, he's coming over to the dark side, my young Padawan. The force is strong in him. I swear to you, you do ministry to Muslims, and I'll give you 10 years before you start snapping and manifesting. I've told people, you think that you're better than us and that you can do a better job, you fake armchair quarterbacks. Get into the battlefield. Start debating and watch how quickly you get frustrated and you won't tolerate garbage anymore, right? You won't tolerate garbage anymore. You won't do it anymore. I've done it since 1999. And I thought, honestly, I actually thought, I actually thought that as I got older, I become more like Jesus, more patient. The opposite is true. The older I get, the more impatient I become, 
the angrier I get, the more politically incorrect I become, and the more <clears throat> I become emboldened to insult people because I don't give a damn what people think, honestly. In the beginning, you think you have to appease people, but then you realize you may appease one person, but you got 10 other critics. You will not be able to make people happy, nor should you. You need to make God happy, make Father happy, make Son happy, make Holy Spirit happy, make our God happy, the triune God. As long as the Lord Jesus is happy, who gives a damn if anyone else barks and manifests? So Trump, are you saying that your mother is a skinhead whore? So that she's only brave behind the screen? With a fake Nick, but she won't show her face because she doesn't want to know who sired you because you're a whore bastard with a fake name. Because if you're standing before my face, you know what I'd do to you? I'd send you to your mommy because you're a whore and you're a bastard and you're scum. No disrespect to whores and bastards and scum. I'm the one showing my face, but you're too much of a whore to show your face because you don't want the Shia to recognize their bastard seed. Because you're one of the bastards that they sired that night when your mother spent a week in the Shia brothel. Okay, so keep taking shots at me. See? So show me your face. Let's see if you're a man. Let's see who the real man is. May God make me bold as David is fighting men and Samson. All right. So we have to wait for a few minutes before I begin because you see they start manifesting. They have no respect. They don't respect their origins. They don't respect their mothers. They don't respect themselves because no matter how many times you tell them the rules, they want to be disrespected. They want to be cussed out because they're abused and they've been violated. All right, Rob, Rob, get off your horse, sir. <laughs> so hopefully we know the rules now. I'm letting you know, if I tell you the rules and you disrespect my rules, you deliberately ignore my rules. You're asking me for it to insult you and cuss you out. All right. And I will be more than happy to cuss you out. And don't be brave behind a camera with a fake Nick and not show your face. Skype me. Show me your face. Let me meet you. Let's see how much men you are. It's called self-defense. See how brave you are. Be more brave than your mothers who are bold enough to go to Iran and do muta and sire you bastards. All right, so we got a lot to talk about. Let's begin in Lord's Prayer because this is what I wait. Sean, are you telling me to chill again? Sean, Sean, you know what I say to bastards like you who tell me to chill? You understand you are a whore as well? Honestly, Sean, if your mother wasn't a whore, you wouldn't disrespect the rules and tell me to chill, knowing I'm going to cuss you out. So do you like the fact that your mother gets cussed out? Because you see, you're being used of Satan. You're filled up saying your father to trigger me. I'm going to chill you out like the Shia chilled your mother out when they did muta with her for 24 hours straight, siring you, your her bastard offspring. Why don't you come and chill me out, you little Shia bastard? Camel piss be upon your mother. See? Now I'm, I'm chilling. I hope you liked it because I'm chilling. Aren't you glad that Sam left purgatory? May God have mercy on me and save me and that I... Finish race and enter the presence of Jesus Christ and love Jesus Christ and I'm his forever and he doesn't give me what I deserve. Please, Lord, have mercy on me and constrain me for your glory. And muzzle these dogs and crush their mouths who are being used of their father devil. Now, Sean, are you glad? Because now I chilled out. I chilled out at your mother's expense like the Shia did, Sean. You bastard. Right? Now, on a serious note, on a serious note, I want you to remember our sister Nina in prayer. On a serious note, pray for our sister Nina. On the Facebook, she announced April 21st. So on a serious note, uh, better than your mom sell out. My mom is better than your mom. She's in heaven, but your mom is in Iran, like the Shia whore that she has sell out. So tell your mother, stop selling out because we don't want more bastard seeds like you. So I should ask how your mother is after doing a week of muta. That little Shia prostitute. Anyway, on a serious note, 
on a serious note, Justin, we don't use LMAO, brother. We use LMBO, laughing Muhammad's butt off. On a serious note, guys, lift up your sister Nina in prayer. On Facebook, she announced April 21st will be the one-year anniversary of her son, Jack, who entered the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. So on a serious note, she knows her son is alive with the Lord Jesus Christ, and she knows she'll see him, but still there's an emptiness and a pain until she sees him face to face. And so this April 21st marks the one-year anniversary that her son left his body and is now in peace resting with the Lord Jesus, awaiting the reunion and the resurrection of the bodies. So keep praying for her. She mentioned it on Facebook. God have mercy on parents who bury their children. May my children bury me, but my children are better than your children. No one will know unless they've experienced it, and God have mercy on us, what it is to bury your child. The Lord knows, and his blessed mother knows, the Theotokos knows, because the blessed mother of the Lord saw her baby beaten, bloodied, and whipped on the cross and died before her eyes because she was at the cross. So she knows, and the Lord knows what it's like for a parent to see their child die before their eyes. So the Lord sympathizes with Nina and knows her pain. And the blessed mother, the Theotokos, the mother of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, was chosen knowing full well that she would have to see her baby, her firstborn, her only born, beaten, bloody, insulted, spit on, nailed, and die. And she was there. John 19, 25, 27. So the Holy Mother understands. We believe the saints are alive, contrary to what Protestants say, as they manifest. And they pray for us because they're in solidarity with us and they love us. And the Lord Jesus understands. So pray for her. When I see her put pictures of her son, it's like a knife in my heart. A handsome man. I'm not saying it in front of her. I'm not saying it because it's her son. Handsome man. Name was Jack. And then she put a clip where he's talking and to hear his voice. I can only imagine the pain she's going through. Pray for her. Notice, in spite of it, she endures. In spite of it, she's here. In spite of it, she serves Jesus Christ. In spite of it, she tries to reign faithful. In spite of it, she goes to the church, takes the Eucharist. In spite of it, she's magnifying Christ. In spite of this pain. In spite of this pain. You understand? So when she puts those images of her son, it kills me. And imagine, he's not my son and it kills me. Right? So I can only imagine. You understand? She is being sustained by Jesus. Jesus is filling her with peace and rest and comfort and joy. Because she knows and she's been assured her son is alive. Christ is real. This is not make-believe. Jesus is alive. Death is not the end of us. And Jack lives because Jesus lives. But until she sees him, she's always going to think about him forming in her womb, giving birth to him, burping him, changing his diapers, seeing him walk baby steps and grow up. And now leaving this world before her without being married and have children. That's, that's a pain and only Christ can heal. So pray for your sister. Pray for her. She knows Jack is alive, and it's not worth tickling her ears. Jesus is real. If Jesus wasn't real, I wouldn't be here. If Jesus wasn't real, we wouldn't be putting our lives on the line. Maramari wouldn't be up there exposing himself to death if Jesus isn't real. He is real. He's alive, and he's worthy. May he not give us what we deserve. May the Lord have mercy on me and forgive me. It's only by his grace I'll enter, not because of my deeds, because I'm no good. And because Jesus is real, he's alive, her son's alive, but it's waiting for the day of the reunion. How many more days, how many more weeks and years must I continue until I see your face again? See? So pray for your sister. Pray for her. This life sucks. This world sucks sucks until Jesus returns. It should not be 
that parents bury their children. It should not be that spouses lose their loved ones. It should not be that children bury their parents. But this is because of sin. It's not what the Lord wanted, but the Lord allowed it. So until then, parents will bury children. Children will bury parents. Siblings will bury one another. Family, friends. And then we have to then deal with the atrocity of people being kidnapped, trafficked, raped, violated, killed, bombed until the Lord comes. See? 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 There you go. See, here's another brother who had to bury his son. Man, this life sucks. Whoo! This life sucks, man. Sucks. This life sucks. Let me show you a passage of scripture. So this is why I wait a few minutes because, you know, the demons will manifest and I got to cuss them out. Do you think I want to begin by cussing people out? No, I want to focus on Jesus, glorify Jesus, and we're edified, not cause people to stumble. But I have to do what I have to do. And may the Holy Spirit constrain me and seal me and own me and guide me, right? Let me show you. Let me show you this verse right here. Okay, let me show you. We got a lot to talk about. We'll pray the Lord's Prayer. There's a lot to talk about today. So be focused, guys. Don't let Satan distract. You know the rules. You know I'm not politically. And I don't think I enjoy being politically incorrect. I have to. I can't. You know, I don't think I enjoy wanting to cuss people out. Why? Do you think I get a high cussing people out? But I have to because dogs have no respect. Now watch here. Let me share this. You want to see how beautiful your Bible is? Your Bible is supernatural. Your Bible is a proof that the God of the Bible exists. Let me share this. Watch this passage. You ready? Look at this passage. Look how beautiful. Psalm 56, verse 8. Psalm 50. Pray for me to get more fit, healthier, leaner, not gain weight, and get holier and more pure and righteous and disciplined. I need to get back and exercise more. Psalm 56, 8. Look how beautiful this is. Tell me your Bible is not beautiful. Look at this, guys. Pay attention to this. Please read with me. Psalm 56, 8. You have taken account of my wanderings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Wow. This right here moves me in my spirit. The Lord keeps record of your tears. Your tears are not in vain. You don't weep in vain. See that? Do you love this verse or what? Psalm 56 verse 8. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? That Doesn't that make you want to cry? Psalm 56 verse 8. And you tell me this Bible is not beautiful, miraculous. It's from God, his love letter to us. The oh man, it's moving me in my heart. The psalmist is asking the Lord, Lord, do not forget my tears. Record my tears and my grief and remember me in my pain. See how beautiful that is? I'm telling you, man, it kills me when I read this because it's real. See, you have taken account of my wanderings. You have written down my journey in this world, what I've experienced, what I've done, and the pain I've seen. So I ask you, O oh Lord, I ask you, O oh Lord, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Do not forget me and overlook me in my pain. And then he says this here. I love this one here. Watch here. Psalm 6, 8, verse 5. Psalm 68, verse 5. Ooh, these verses, man, they're powerful. These verses are powerful. A father of the fatherless and a judge for the widows is God in his holy habitation. He's the father of those who have no parents. And he is the one who vindicates and <clears throat> comes to the aid of the widow who has no one to care for her. Psalm 68, 5. 
See how beautiful your Bible is? Now let me show you some more. Psalm 27, read it in its entirety, but this is what I want to show you. I'm going to show you just a few more. The promises of God, because God cannot lie. He cannot change. And he's faithful to his promises. Look what it says. Psalm 27, 10. There's two ways you can read the Hebrew. For my father and mother have forsaken me. Or if my father and mother forsake me, Yahweh will take me up. Even my parents may abandon me. Psalm 27, 10. Even my parents may abandon me and forsake me, but my God will never forsake me. If they abandon me, he will take me in his arms and make me his child. Psalm 27, 10. Right? Right? Now watch here. Isaiah 49, 15 and 16. And sadly, we know stories of parents who murder their children because they're callous and demonized. So look what the Lord says here. Isaiah 49, 15 and 16. Watch here, guys. These are the promises of Scripture. These are the promises of Scripture. Watch here. Can a woman forget her infant and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Ask Nina that. There's not a day she doesn't think of her handsome Jack. And he is a handsome man. I don't say that to say it to tickler. A handsome man, you see joy in his face. You see peace and joy and love. She raised him well. Can a woman forget her infant and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget, but I will not forget you. And we know demonized women, demonized men, demonized parents who get to the point of wickedness, evil, that they kill their own children. Yahweh says it's even possible for a mother, it's even possible for a mother to murder and abandon her own children, but it's not possible for me. It's not possible for me. You know why? He says, behold, I've inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. The promises given to Israel are now extended to the church in Christ. He's the same, so the promises do not fail. Did you notice what he says? I've inscribed in the palms of my hands. That's an image of the cross. What do I mean? I've inscribed you. Your names are in the palms of my hands. Written with the ink of the nails. Because the wrist was considered part of the hand. In ancient times, mm -hmm. when you speak of hand, they considered the wrist part of the hand. So I have inscribed you in the palms of my hands with the nails. You have been etched in my hands, in my heart, in my mind forever and ever. See that? Can a woman forget her infant and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Even these may forget. But I will not forget you. Behold, I have inscribed in the palms of my hands. Your walls are continually before me. See that? See that? Everyone got it? So let me give you another promise of scripture just to prepare us. Don't forget this one again. Psalm 56, 8. I want you to remember this again. Psalm 56, 8. You have taken account of my wanderings. You're aware of my journeys, O God. You've seen my life and you've seen what I've been through. You've seen me being abandoned by my father. You've seen me and my struggles for self-worth. My mother was too busy working, trying to make ends meet because my dad abandoned me. And she didn't know how to verbalize her love, but she meant well. And you've seen the longing of my heart. And you've seen my failures and my sins and how I shamed you and disgraced you, though I didn't want to. And I disappointed you. And you've seen how I was cheated on, verbally abused, physically disrespected. Thrown in the streets without my children. Lord my God, put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Remember me, O Lord, like the man on 
the cross. I want to give you two more to prepare your hearts because this is what we're here for. We're here for not just knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, love builds up. Knowledge that will be used by the Spirit to penetrate our souls and hearts, to get to know God more completely and love Him more passionately and cling to Him more desperately. That's the purpose. Now watch here, the goodness of our Lord. And then we're going to begin because I got a lot of clips to play. You tell me this book is not supernatural. You tell me this book is not beautiful. You tell me this book is not the voice of God, our creator, speaking to us. Is there any other book like this? Look at here. The man on the cross who began insulting Jesus, but as he saw Jesus' composure and demeanor, he realized he's no ordinary man. Luke 23, 39 to 43. And one of the criminals hanging there was blaspheming him, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other one kept seeing how Jesus was reacting. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Woman, behold your son. Behold your mother. He's seeing Jesus, and his, the Spirit is moving him because he sees that this man is no ordinary man. And he doesn't deserve the condemnation inflicted on him. So look. But the other answered and rebuking him said, Do you not even fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? Aren't you afraid of God? We're about to die and meet God because we are sinners, criminals. We deserve what we get. And we indeed are suffering justly. For we are receiving what we deserve for what we have done. Now watch. But this man has done nothing wrong. He realized he's innocent. He is the one he claimed to be. The accusation is that he claims the Messiah, the King of Israel, Son of God. And I'm convinced it's the truth. He doesn't deserve what's happening to him. And since he's the Messiah, I know God will vindicate him because the Messiah will not be abandoned by God. And so he says, look at this. And he's saying, Jesus, look, in his humbleness, knowing his unworthiness, because he's a criminal and he's dying for his sins. He says, remember me. Lord, when you come into your kingdom and you establish your kingdom and you come to judge the living and the dead, please remember me. Remember my kindness. Remember my confession. Do not give me what I deserve. Please remember me when you come in your kingdom and your power to judge the living and the dead. Look what the Lord says. And he said to him, Truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. I'm going to do you one better. You won't have to wait for me to return in glory when I establish the kingdom on earth and I return physically to judge the living and the dead. I'm going to do you one better. Today when your soul leaves, you'll be with me as I accompany you into glory. See that? Caught it? I'll do you one better. You won't have to wait for me to come in my kingdom to judge the living and the dead. You're going to be with me today. You're going to dine with me today. You will see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the angels. You will be in their company, resting and awaiting the resurrection of your body when I return. And then here's the final one. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6. Are you ready? Watch here. Make sure that your way of life is free from the love of money. Don't pursue money and make it your God and fall into snares and then deny and betray the Lord. But be content with what you have. Why? Because God has sworn and cannot lie. For he himself has said, I will never desert you nor will I ever forsake you. So if you know he cannot lie and he's faithful, then say with utmost confidence, having no doubt of this, so that we can't we say, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? See, that should be your attitude. Let me give you a final passage that I love. Okay, watch here. No better way than hear the word of God and be reminded of the promises of God. I love this. You're, this one I love. Man, one of my favorite passages of Scripture. You ready? 
See that? This is a mother who's going to have to remember the year anniversary of her baby Jack having passed away. And look what she's saying. She's testifying. See? Now watch. Watch here. Proverbs 30, verse 7 to 9. I love this proverb. Crystals, Lepanto, everyone. I love this proverb. Yeah, I'm going to give you five reasons why you got to get the out of here and return to your vomit. Look at this. Proverbs 37 to 9. Two things I asked of you. Do not withhold from me before I die. So he's saying, Lord, give me these two things. Andrew, thanks for barking like a whore. You're going to be judged for being a fake whore that you are. You are not Christian. You're not pious. Even your name, Andrew Dice Clay, shows you're a whore and a pervert because Andrew Dice Clay was a pervert, which means you're born of a whore and your mother's a pervert. And you're going to be judged by your words because you're a scum, whore, son of Satan. May God crush your mouth and stuff you with your vomit. Now return to your vomit, you garbage, whore, trash can on you. May the Lord give you what you deserve in Jesus' name. Now, God crush your mouth, you filthy, wicked son of the devil. Andrew Dice Clay, the one who treats the woman like your mother as a whore. And that's who you are boasting. You filthy scum. May God use your words against you and crush your mouth, humiliate you until you repent. Now go to your vomit, you garbage can, you spiritual whore. Anyway. Here you go, Proverbs 30, verses 7 to 9. You filthy bastard, hiding behind an immoral comedian who treated women like your mother as prostitutes, and you're proud of it. And you're talking about me being judged. May the Lord use your measure against you, in Jesus' name. Now, watch here. Okay, watch here. Proverbs 30, verses 7 to 9. Two things I asked of you. Do not withhold from me before I die. Watch here. Keep worthlessness. Keep these worthless dogs, these scum, sons of the devil, O oh Lord, who think they know you. Andrew Dice Clay, this bastard. Teach him your fear. Keep this dog away from us. And every false word far from me. Keep worthless things. Watch here. Let me show you another translation real quickly. The not inspired version. Okay, let's go here. Two things I ask of you, Yahuwah. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies from me. Keep me from ever lying and keep falsehood from me and these dogs from me so I don't stumble. Now watch here. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Do not let me be poor, but do not let me be rich. But give me only my daily bread. Why? Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? I'm afraid if I get too rich, I will become self-sufficient, thinking I'm my own God, and I don't need you. Or if I'm too poor, or I become poor, and I steal, and so dishonor name my God. So I don't want to be too poor, so I don't rob and dishonor you, or too rich and think I'm self-sufficient and don't need you. I don't want either poverty or riches, my daily bread, so I can glorify you. Proverbs 30, verses 7 to 9. Carol, your mother is not human. She's a dog and a whore of the Shia, Carol. I just want you to know that. Okay, Carol? Your mother is not human. She's a whore and a dog of the Shia like you. So, Carol, go to the Shia because they're waiting for a prostitute like you. They want to do muta with you and your mommy. Proverbs 30, verses 7 to 9. Proverbs 30, verses 7 to 9. You see it? Proverbs 30, verses 7 to 9. Do you love this passage or what? And we're going to begin. Two things I ask of you, O Lord, Yahuwah. Do not refuse me before I die. Grant me these. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. I don't want to be poor and I don't want to be rich. Why? But just give me my daily bread. That's the Lord's prayer, isn't it? Why? Otherwise, I may have too much. I may get too rich in the sun and say, who's the Lord? I don't need God. Look at me, I'm rich. My own strength, my own mind did this for me. What God? I'm God. Or I may become poor and steal, and so dishonor name my God. Proverbs 30, verses 7 to 9. You guys got it? Yeah, actually, I've also read 
that your mother gave birth to you doing a pagan ritual, Demzi, Ruby. That your mother got pregnant when she was doing a pagan ritual with the Shia. Is that true? Everyone got it now? So we got it now. Glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let's now get into some clips. Now, mods, you see the trolls, right? They have no respect. So when people then attack me saying, I don't see Jesus in you. Well, you stupid, dumb bastard. If Jesus was in you, you wouldn't disrespect the rules and cause us to sin and stumble. But by disrespecting the rules, that means you're being used of the devil to cause us to sin. So you are a whore of Satan. So I don't respect you. Now, let's see if you're true Christians. But that's okay, Lepanto. As long as God gives me health and holiness and boldness, I will glorify the Lord and crush the mouths of these dogs till I die. And may the Lord allow me to see my daughters grow up, right? Is it my fault, honestly, guys, when I repeat the rules and they still disrespect the rules? Is it my fault? Honestly, I mean, how many times I have to warn them? Don't they deserve what they get? May God constrain me for the glory of the Father, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. Take over my mouth. Make me your mouthpiece. Destroy all errors and sin in us. Save me from error and sin. And do not allow me to be politically correct. As long as I don't grieve you, anger you, I don't care what these dogs say. Crush their mouths, humiliate them, and chasten them until they learn the fear of the Lord. And do not give us what we deserve, but seal us and own us fully. Own the ministry. Close the door of censorship. Own our loved ones. Own my daughters. Bring their mother to the feet of Christ. And give us the power to love Jesus by our deeds, even unto death or until he returns. And never betray Then our shame, the Lord. Destroy all forms of blasphemy and idolatry from us. Purge us, Holy Spirit. We need you. We beseech you. I don't answer to these dogs who think they're Christian. I answer to you because you own me. I'm your property. We're your property. You own me in my mouth and possess our bodies for the glory of Jesus Christ. Grant me perfect recall of every jot, tittle, portion of Scripture. Increase our numbers for the glory of Jesus to the rage of these dogs who hate me. As long as you love us and we're in love with you, it doesn't matter what they think. And finish the work you've begun in us so that we don't live double lives. And we're not hypocrites, but doers of the word, obeying the Lord Jesus Christ even unto death. We need you. And please, by your grace, usher us into the presence of Jesus to enjoy the Lord Jesus and rest with him. And love him forever and ever and never be cut off from the Lord Jesus. We need you, Holy Spirit. I need you. Heal us, feed us, and nourish us. My daughters, our loved ones, even their mother. And be with Nina, your servant. Holy Spirit, show her and remind her. Because the Lord is alive. Jack is alive. This is not fairy tale. This is not make-believe. We are not deceived. Jesus is real. He is alive. He is risen. The tomb is empty. And you are alive in us. Make clear to her. Jack is resting. Full of the joy and life of the Lord Jesus Christ. And give us the grace to laugh at death. Because death is a door. And on the other side, we will see the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. Give us the power to cling and cleave to the Lord Jesus. And every betrayer deny or shame the Lord Jesus. But love the Lord Jesus Christ. And give me the health I need. The discipline I need. To serve the church. Strengthen my throat, my heart, my arteries, my lungs, my chest. And make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants. And bless the numbers and bless my neighbors that they see Jesus in me and not a hypocrite. We love you, Holy Spirit. Give us the power to love you perfectly. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay, I have some clips to play. I know. I'm going to get people angry, and I know people are going to be disappointed. Let me remind you, I'm not here to sway you to side with any political group or government. May God purge my motives and give me the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm here to be used of the Spirit to serve you and point you to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I'm here to encourage you, be pro-Jesus, pro-kingdom of Christ, and have no allegiance to any political system. You're not pro-Israel or anti-Israel. You're not pro-Palestine or anti-Palestine. Your allegiance is not to the Democratic Party or Republican Party. Your allegiance is to the church, the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, and his rule in your lives, and you want to make that rule manifest on earth. So you only side with those who seek to legislate in accord with the will of King Jesus, our Lord. And you call out atrocities and condemn atrocities no matter where it comes from. So I want to put in perspective. We condemn all terrorists. I hate Muhammad with a passion. I hate terrorist groups who follow Muhammad with a passion until they repent. I pray God eradicates Hamas, ISIS, Boko Haram, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, if they're still around, wipes out Muhammad and the Quran and all of the Quran and bring millions of Muslims to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And what they did October 7 was an atrocity, but that doesn't justify what's being done to the Palestinians. And this is why I had to change the title to Palestinian Christians. I'm going to play some clicks from clips from Tucker Carlson. Now, I can't play all the clips. So Lord willing, tomorrow I'm going to play the rest. Why? Because I don't want to be flagged for copyright. Unbeknownst to me, about five days ago, Tucker Carlson interviewed a Palestinian Christian pastor who lives in Bethlehem, who's a pastor of the Lutheran Church, but he works with the Catholic, Orthodox, and other Protestant communities. They don't discriminate. And he's been very vocal against evangelical Christianity and Christian Zionism and the atrocities being done by the support of Zionists, Christian Zionists, and the money they give to Israel, resulting in the indiscriminate persecution of even Christians. I, wanna, I want you to hear it from his own mouth. Now, there are too many clips. I can't play all of them. So Lord willing, I'll play some today and tomorrow to hear it from a Palestinian Christian living in Palestine and what he says about Christian Zionism. Are you with me there? And this will put the Christian Zionists to shame and humiliation. I'm going to play it, right? Tucker Carlson has gotten severe backlash for interviewing this man. Tucker Carlson has gotten severe attacks from the, not liberal media, from the Christian Zionists and others for giving this man a platform to express his pain and disappointment at so-called Christians who think they love Jesus Christ and are doing the Lord a favor by encouraging what's happening in Israel and Palestine at the expense of the lives of Palestinian Christians. Okay, I'm going to play it, right? I'm going to play the clips. So bear with me. I'm going to play two clips, and Lord willing, tomorrow I'll play more. I can't play all of them now because I don't want to get flagged. All right? And I'll give you the links. Are you ready? And then I'm going to play some clips from Marmari. Marmari just came out with a clip encouraging Christians, no backlash, no violence, no revenge, pray and forgive which is actually biblical. That doesn't conflict with defending yourself. I want to be clear. There's a difference with defending your lives, your lands, your properties, your churches, and then going out seeking vengeance by destroying properties and killing people indiscriminately. That is condemned. But if they come to you and they want to kill you, your family, your you have a right to defend yourselves even at the expense of taking them out. You understand the difference? Let's see if you know the difference. There's a difference between you defending your life, the life of your family, the life of your church, the life of your land, from those who are coming to murder, rape, and pillage. And a difference from then you going out and then killing people indiscriminately and destroying their property because of corporate <clears throat> punishment. You do the one, not the latter. You understand? So if a Muslim comes, and tries to kill you at church, 
You then don't run out to mosques and then destroy mosques and then target Muslims indiscriminately. That you do not do. Do you understand the difference? Am I clear so I don't get misrepresented? And if anyone lies about what I teach, may the Lord crush their mouth and expose them. Jeep Kundo Apologetics. Contact me on Skype if you can, okay? Skype me, because I want to talk to you privately. Here's my Skype. Are you with me there? Yep. So in your state, you can conceal and carry. Okay, am I clear before I play the clips? Because you know you're going to have lying demons slandering me and lying about my position. You with me there? There's a difference between you defending your life, your land, your property, your church, with physical force, even if it means you have to take someone out, send them to meet Jesus, and then going out and then punishing people and damaging property indiscriminately, because that's what Israel's doing. That's what Israel's doing. Bombing Palestine indiscriminately with 500 and 2,000 pound bombs, where over 30,000 are dead, many of whom are children. We do not have a right to do that. We have a right to defend and protect, even if it means I take someone's life to protect the lives of someone else who's innocent. But we don't have the right to then say, well, this Muslim attacked the church, we're going to go burn mosques and we're going to kill Muslims indiscriminately. Okay? We un you understand that, right? Am I clear? I repeated myself. I try to repeat myself two, three, four times. If Joshua King is misrepresenting me, then he's a whore. Send him back to his vomit. Okay, everyone got it? Do you understand what I said? Do you understand the difference? Someone breaks into your home and wants to then murder you and violate your children. Send them to meet Jesus, Smith and Weston. Send them to meet Jesus. Say, hey, say hi to Jesus when you see him. Bam! That's self-defense. And you have a right. You get the difference, right? Send him to meet his maker. You understand the difference, right? But then you don't go and say, oh, a Muslim did it. Let's now burn down mosques. Let's destroy Muslim property. Let's kill Muslims indiscriminately. All right. So if we got that, I'm going to play these clips. I just want to make sure you got it. Okay. Let's go here. I want you to see this. Let me play it here. I want to give you the link. Right here. This man here. How free are Christians to practice Christianity in Israel? Do you know that evangelicals as churches are not officially recognized in Israel? Not recognized uh, by the government? And by the way, evangelical Christianity is not officially recognized as a denomination in the state of Israel. The biggest problem Christians are facing is in East Jerusalem. They are constantly targeted by radical groups, radical Jewish groups. Let's be clear. Some churches, there was an attempt to burn them. A Christian clergy being spit at by uh, these groups. Uh, they write very offensive slogans on the wall. There's strong incitements against Christians, especially in the old city of Jerusalem. What kind of slogans, what kind of graffiti is written against Christians? A lot of it is calling for Christians. We don't want you here, you should leave. It seems that those who do these attacks are never held accountable. In fact, the heads of churches said in a statement that they feel there is a systematic attempt to empty Jerusalem of Christians. How free are Christians to practice Isaiah, Christianity? Like the, the Do you know that before. evangelicals as churches are not officially recognized in Israel? Not recognized uh, by the government? By the way, evangelical Christianity is not officially recognized Join as so a denomination so in the state of Israel. The biggest problem you, Christians are facing is in East Jerusalem. They are constantly targeted by radical groups, radical Jewish groups. Let's be clear. Some churches, there was an attempt to burn them. A Christian clergy being spit at by uh, these groups. Uh, they write very offensive slogans on the wall. There is strong incitements against Christians, especially in the old city of Jerusalem. What kind of slogans, what kind of graffiti is written against Christians? A lot of it is calling for Christians. We don't want you here. You should leave. It seems that those who do these attacks are never held accountable. In fact, the heads of churches said in a statement that they feel there is a systematic attempt to empty Jerusalem of Christians. How free are Christians? Okay. Did you catch it? That's from a Palestinian. Now, Isaiah, you whore. Come join me on stream, right? Only you to see who's wrong. You better have your Bible ready because I'm going to bury you. 
for being of your father, the devil. You don't know Jesus. You're a dog. But do you see that? Now, let me get you the link again. So you can watch it. One second. How free are Christians to practice Christianity in Israel? Do you know that evangelicals as churches are not officially recognized in Israel? Not recognized uh, by the government? By the way, evangelical Christianity is not officially recognized as a denomination in the state of Israel. The biggest problem Christians are facing is in East Jerusalem. They are constantly targeted by radical groups, radical Jewish groups. Let's be clear. Some churches, there was an attempt to burn them. A Christian clergy being spit at by uh, these groups. Uh, they write very offensive slogans on the wall. There is strong incitements against Christians, especially in the old city of Jerusalem. What kind of slogans, what kind of graffiti is written against Christians? A lot of it is calling for Christians we don't want you here, you should leave. It seems that those who do these attacks are never held accountable. In fact, the heads of churches said in a statement that they feel there is a systematic attempt to empty Jerusalem of Christians. How free are... There you go. From a Palestinian pastor in Bethlehem. Okay, I want to play another clip. Now remember, YouTube, this is called fair use. Copyright law allows for fair use. So I'm going to play one more clip. And Lord willing, I'm going to play some more clips tomorrow. So, but let me play one more. But I need you to listen. You dogs who think you know the Bible, don't pretend you know, because I'll bury you in scripture. You don't know the Bible. You're a joke. So Isaiah, you whore, come up and join me. Let's see how much you know the Bible. Okay, stop barking and manifesting. But before I do that, let me just show you this clip. All right, before I play it. All right, let's see. Okay. Okay. Oh, my goodness. One second. And we're going to get into the meat of the matter. So this is what happens with Christian Zionism. Look at this Palestinian pastor who's going to call them out. And he's going to tell you what these Christian Zionists are actually preparing the Jews for. What I've told you in the past. I've told you this in my series. And he's going to spell it out. Now, I need you to listen. Help me to help you. I need you to stay focused. There's the link. We're going to start playing. And this is the only clip I can play. Lord willing, tomorrow I'll play other clips. We're going to start from the 11 minute, 27 second mark. Listen attentively. I don't want to keep playing it so I don't get flagged. Fair use, YouTube. Copyright law allows fair use. Playing clips for educational purposes. Okay, now let's go here. We're going to start here. Need you to listen. So there's the link I gave it to you, Tucker Carlson. The only one bold enough to bring this voice. Look what he's going to say about Christian Zionism. These are your Christian brothers and sisters, you Christians living in the West. Look at how they feel by your support, indiscriminate support of Zionism. Listen. Take our perspective seriously. Tucker, you mentioned something important about the war in Iraq, and that war literally emptied half of the Christian population. Why did Hamza say, by the way, that your mother is a Shia whore? who got beat in Iran and they mounted her like a whore and that you got actually touched by your uncle because he thought you're one of the young boys of paradise and he mounted you like the Shia mounted your mother, Dahaba. So why are you a whore like your mother? Ask the Shia, because your prophet is in hell. Population there. Uh, you know that Christian leaders pleaded with the American administration not to do that war and not to engage in it. One more time, let's go back earlier. Listen to this and see things with your own eyes, uh, take our perspective seriously. Tucker, you mentioned something important about the war in Iraq, and that war literally emptied half of the Christian population. You hear that? Uh, you know that Christian leaders pleaded with the American administration not to do that war and not to engage in it. And because we realized, they realized that uh, it's going to have some serious consequences not just on the Christian presence, but on the region as a whole. And never, I think, did they anticipate that it will have this severe impact on the Christian presence in the Middle East. So again, I wish Listen. these leaders realize how damaging their position, their lobbying, their money is, even to our existence as Palestinian Christians and as Middle Eastern Christians uh, in general. Did you hear it? The Christians in the Middle East are telling the Christians in the West, Please don't attack. Please don't attack because we're going to suffer and you're going to dispossess us because we're going to be forced to leave. Okay, here's the link. All right. So now watch. Now listen.
it, it's very obvious to me that many evangelical leaders in the United States care much more about the highly secular government of Israel than they care about Christian communities in the Middle East. Why do you do you have a guess as to why that would be? Did you hear the question? Did you guys hear the question? Are you learning? Crystals, everyone else? Did you hear it? Even Tucker Carlson saying, it's very obvious to me that the Christian leaders in the West are more supportive of the secular government of Israel than their fellow Christians. Why is that? Now, Christians, listen to the pastor who's in Palestine. He's going to tell you it's because of the theology of evangelical Christian Zionism. Their theology has caused them to ignore their brothers and sisters in Christ. Listen carefully, please. Don't let the demons manifest. May the Holy Spirit seal us to focus. Listen. Some of it is theology. Some of it is the theology of Christian Zionism uh, that teaches, uh, for example, uh, that Christians must support Israel because the Bible teaches that. And um, oftentimes that is part of a larger uh, theology of the end times in which they view the presence of uh, Jews in the land as preparing for the second coming of Christ. They see it as a fulfillment of prophecy, uh, not realizing again what that means on the ground. See? I always say it's as if the land was empty to them. Uh, they are excited about certain events without understanding the consequences of these events on real uh, lives. Uh, the irony is that many of these positions actually believe uh, and many evangelical leaders believe that at the end times and after Jews are gathered in Palestine, two thirds of them will be massacred. Did you hear it? Go back and watch my sessions where I said the same thing. That the evangelicals, Evid, if you're not that bastard Isaiah, I'm going to get you out of here. I want to cuss you out. I didn't ask you to come out, Evid. Slave of Hashem. You don't know who Hashem is. So if you're not that Isaiah guy, get out of here before I insult your mother. Now, did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? I have said this and I've affirmed this in previous sessions. No, actually, the true God is not your Hashem because Hashem is not the God of the Bible. You are a whore, son of Satan. Now, keep barking like your mother. Watch what I'm going to do to you in a minute, Evid. I'm going to have the Shia come on your mother again. Just sit down, girl. Down, girl. Stop barking. You see what he said? And this is something I've confirmed in previous sessions. In previous sessions, I've actually shown from, right? I've actually shown from Zechariah that according to this understanding of end time, two-thirds of the Jews will be slaughtered. So when the evangelicals are pushing for the Jews to go back to Israel, it's because they want Zechariah chapter 12, 13, and 14 to be fulfilled where two-thirds of the Jews will be slaughtered, only one-third will survive. Do you think that's good news for the Jews? You understand, Jews? That's what the evangelicals are encouraging when they give you support and send you to the land so that two-thirds of you will be killed and only a third of you survive for Jesus' return. And even Chunky Yogurt mentioned that previously on his show exposing John Hagee. He even mentioned that. I'll play that clip, Lord willing, tomorrow. Well, listen. Uh, and only for the other third to convert to Christianity. And somehow they consider that uh, a Jewish-friendly uh, theology. Um, don't get me wrong. I am for Christians and Jews, just like I'm for all religions coming together, understanding one another. But there is something very problematic when we make a certain religious group as an object in our theology and even uh, eschatology and relate to them uh, accordingly, again, without really understanding what is happening uh, on the ground, uh, without understanding uh, even the complexity of Israel as a state, how secular it is, but even uh, how much uh, it is oppressing Palestinians, uh, breaking the international law, committing uh, sometimes, you know, human rights abusing documented against uh, Palestinians, including Palestinian uh, Christians. Um, to me, Christians should be for peace. And uh, again, uh, I wish you were investing all of this energy and money in initiatives that uh, bring peace. 
uh, not continuing to support Israel unconditionally without holding them accountable, which is, in my opinion, what drove us to this mess right now with the catastrophe of thousands of Palestinians killed and October 7 and all of that. Uh, it's all of these policies. And uh, we continue to say that the church has been part of the problem. The church has been part of the problem in the West. Christians, this man is a Christian. Are you going to say he's anti-Semitic? anti-Israel, pro-Hamas, a Christian Palestinian who has a church in Bethlehem who works with other Christians, whether Catholic or Orthodox, because they have <clears throat> solidarity knowing they have it worse from two ends, from the Palestinian Muslims and the Israelis. Why? Because they're Palestinian and Christian, because the Jews who are Orthodox think that Christians are idolaters and worse than Muslims. And then they get discriminated by Palestinian Muslims because they're Christian. You don't care about their plight. You don't care that their churches are being bombed, that their priests have been killed. and You don't care. And I'm going to play that clip tomorrow, Lord Link, because I don't want to get flagged today. I'm going to show you this. You don't care because you think you're doing Jesus a favor and you're helping Jesus to return speedily? Okay. And it's one of my desires to see the church part of the solution when it comes to Palestine and Israel whether in this war or before, it was confirmed to me that the church is part of the problem. Okay, there you go. Now, Lord willing, I can only play these clips today. Tomorrow, Lord willing, I have a lot more clips, but I can't play all of them. Why? Because I'm going to get flagged. In Jesus' name, we ask you, Lord, to own this channel and destroy censorship. They don't take down any of the videos for your glory. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, Christians, what are you going to say? He's anti-Semitic. He's pro-Hamas. He's anti-Israel because he's a Christian minister and he's a Lutheran who works with Catholics and Orthodox. They all work together. They don't discriminate because they understand united they stand, divided they fall, and they only have one another in Palestine because the Muslims don't like them because they're Christians. Israelis don't like them because they're Palestinians. And the Orthodox say, well, you're, you Christians are idolaters and worse than the Muslims. Lord willing, I have clips to play even from Chunky Yogurt and Anna Kasparian that's going to trouble you. Even the liberal progressive media is seeing the inconsistencies. But I'm evil because I'm exposing this. Now let's play Marmari. Are we ready? Marmari came out with a statement today. I got to go to my Facebook to show you it. Marmari came out with a statement. His uh, church's official Facebook came out with a statement. So we're going to play it now. So I got to now do this. You ready? We're going to hear from him. He just sent a recording. What the Christian response should be. Are we ready? I got to play it. So it's my Facebook page, the Ben Malik account, because the Sam Shamoon account is still down for a few more days. We ready? All right. Right here. It came out a few hours ago, and I shared it on my Facebook. This is one of his priests, whom him and I don't get along too well, but that's okay. Now listen, right? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Greetings to you all. May the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you. Can you On hear? the evening of Monday, the 15th of April, 2024, at approximately 7.05 p.m., whilst conducting live Assyrian Bible preaching, an attempt was made on the life of our beloved Bishop, His Grace Matamari Emmanuel. We wish to confirm that His Grace Matamari Emmanuel sustained non-life-threatening injuries during non the attack. We can confirm that his condition is stable and is receiving great care. Other victims of the attack were Father Isaac Royal, who is now recovering well, and nearby church members who also received special care. New South Wales Police have apprehended the attacker and the necessary rule of law shall prevail. The unfortunate events which took place outside the church caused unnecessary delays and threats to both victims, paramedics and police. The church does not condone the activities which took place whereby several persons were injured, property damaged, and delays in rendering much needed assistance. There was a large contingent of people yes, who certain. were not members of the church who attended and caused a major disturbance. Listen. His Grace Bishop Marmari Emmanuel preaches love and peace 
However, the events that took place were quite the opposite. It is his wish that everyone resort to private prayer and to not escalate the matter any further. The Church is cooperating fully with New South Wales Police in all strike force investigations currently underway. We ask that whoever has any information in regards to the events which transpired on the 15th of April 2024 to please contact Crime Stoppers or local police. We expect the public to cooperate with the authorities. Current social media messages claiming to be on behalf of the Church which are promoting a prayer vigil are false. Please revert to the church's website, cgsc.org.au, official Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube accounts for all announcements. We wish to express our sincere thanks to all the first responders to bring in calm and assistance to what was a horrific situation. The support and love shown by our fellow religious leaders, government, and community has been overwhelming. Our thanks and blessings to everyone, and above all, we thank the only everlasting, Amen. living, and eternal God, Jesus Christ Amen. of Nazareth, for his mercy and compassion during this time. Now, Marmari is going to play. Now, I didn't know it was on their YouTube channel. If it did, I would go to their YouTube channel. Now, Marmari, they're going to play his recording. And then I have another recording of Marmari from a session he did a while back. So, Lord willing, we're going to play these two clips, and then we go into the Trinity in Genesis. I hope you're enjoying this. I hope you still find it edifying that the Spirit is still working through me and using this channel because you see we cover a variety of topics and you see how we recall the promises of Scripture because the Bible is given to comfort us because it's supernatural. Focus now, please. Do not focus on each other. Focus because if you're focused on each other, you're not learning. You're disrespecting the rules. So let's continue. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Amen. Amen. Now here he goes. Marmari is going to speak. And now a word from His Grace, Bishop Marmari Emmanuel. Listen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Amen. Um, this is Bishop Marie Emmanuel um, addressing our beloved faithfuls, whoever you are and wherever you are. We need to understand that we need to be always thankful to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. For whatever trials and tribulations we go through, uh, we are carrying the cross. Let us not, not, not forget that at all. The Lord Jesus said to us, if you do not carry your cross every day and follow me, you are not worthy to be my disciple. Amen. We thank the Lord Jesus for what took place in the last couple of days. Um, uh, I'm doing fine, uh, recovering very quickly. We thank the Lord Jesus. So there is no, no need to be worried or concerned. Uh, and a piece of advice to our, all, uh, our beloved faithfuls. I need you to act Christ-like. Focus. The Lord Jesus never taught us to fight. The Lord Jesus never taught us to retaliate. The Lord Jesus never said to us an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Mm -hmm. The Lord Jesus said, never return evil with evil, but return evil with good. For this is our master, our teacher, amen, our leader, amen, amen, amen. and our good shepherd who leads us to green pastures and still waters. Hallelujah. So my, my beloveds, I want you to always be calm. We need to be always law abiding citizen as well. We need to cooperate with the police directives whether it be at a state level or a federal level. We, uh, we uh, pray for our country, our beloved country, Australia, and our beautiful city of Sydney. And we pray that the Lord Jesus always protects this country and the people of this country. And we should never forget that we are very blessed to be Aussies. Mm -hmm. But above all, we are Christians and we need to act like it. Love never fails. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 13, 8. Love never fails. Amen. Whatever has happened to me personally, I thank the Lord Jesus. It's, it's a huge blessing for me. Jared, I thank the Lord Jesus. He's not complaining. Now watch what he's going to do. I thank the Lord Jesus. It's a blessing. He's not complaining. Now watch what he's going to say. I, uh, I forgive whoever has done this uh, act. And I say to him, 
you're my son, I love you, and I will always pray for you. And whoever sent you to do this, I forgive them as well, in Jesus' mighty name. Um, I have nothing in my heart but love for everyone, whether that person is a Christian or not. That's uh, totally beside the point. The Lord Jesus always taught us to love one another. Love God and love your neighbor like yourself. Whoever that neighbor is, we need to love them and respect them as we love and respect ourselves. So I have forgiven them. I'm praying for them. And for this young man, I say to you, you're my son and you'll always be in my prayers. May the Lord Jesus forgive you. May the Lord Jesus bless you and show you the way, my dear, my dear son. And once again, to our beloved faithfuls, we need to reflect Christ in our life. The Lord Jesus never said, go out and fight in the street. Yep. Never said to retaliate, exactly. but to pray. And this is what I'm asking everyone to do. Pray, my beloved. Thank the Lord Jesus and respect the law of this country and also adhere to the directives from our beloved uh, police force, from the commissioners and to everyone else in this um, government. We need to be uh, law abiding citizens. God bless you all. And uh, God willing, we will see you soon and uh, go back to our normal duties once again, serving the Lord from the heart. God bless. Take care. Okay. There you go. You see that? See that right there? Didn't I tell you the Lord's going to use it to glorify his name and exalt this man? See that? Now, what are you going to say about him? Oh, he's an historian. No, he denies the Theotokos. He has two persons in Christ. He's not a Christian. In fact, let me tell you how wicked some dogs are. And these are people I know, and sadly... They know me, and I'm sad to be even associated with them. There are Assyrians who became evangelicals, people I know, and I don't want to lose my testimony and cuss them out. They took this as an opportunity to take a sh cheap shot. A man who almost got murdered was willing to die as a martyr for Jesus. Well, what did these Assyrians do, people I know? Watch here. Ebi who I know. I know him personally. I know his family. I don't want to get personal with him. Look what he did. He then posted this on Facebook, and I commented, and I may get blocked and banned from Facebook for another 30 days. This is what he did. He takes an opportunity. The man who got stabbed, who's in the hospital, this man here, who thinks he's doing Jesus a favor, Abihamu, posting this Jezebel's post, one I refuted long, too long ago, Sally Hart, who hates the ancient traditions. She thinks she knows the Bible. She has a Jezebel spirit. And so they post this to attack him because why? Notice when he posted this, you tell me this man is not of the devil. He's not a tool of Satan. Of all the times you can post something, you post it now, right now. Right now, when the man is recovering, who's done more for Jesus than you can even imagine, who almost got killed and martyred for Jesus, you fat slob. May God constrain me so I don't lose my testimony because of people like you. So he posts this from June 3rd, 2023. He posted seven hours ago. The Bible says all are greed and corrupt and need of the glory of God. And I declare that the only one who didn't sin is Lord Jesus Christ. The bishop also makes Mary sinless and falsely claims that she did not sin equal to the Lord Jesus, the son of God Almighty. And so this man who thinks he knows Jesus and he's doing God a favor posted this seven hours ago, knowing the circumstances. And he's a Protestant evangelical who couldn't defend the Bible if his life depended on it. See that? How do you respect such folks? How do you not get zealous and are filled with righteous rage that of all the days you now decide to post this, knowing this man is in the hospital recovering, almost got killed because his love for Jesus Christ, you coward? And I know this man personally. I know his family personally. He used to come to my Bible studies. See that? See? And you guys wonder why I'm the way I am? Right? You guys wonder why the way I am? No, Tasha, no, you can't use that excuse. No, sister. No, no, no. 
When Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. He was talking to the Roman soldiers who did not know the scriptures. You're misquoting Luke 23, 33, 34. For those who claim to know the scriptures, for those who claim to know the Bible, Jesus says, you have no excuse for your sin because you claim to see and you claim to know the Bible. Then you have no excuse because your words will now condemn you because you claim to know scripture. You just misapplied the scriptures. Don't do that, sister. Okay? So now the rest of you, are you going to take a cheap shot at mm -hmm. this man? Oh, but he's Nestorian. He doesn't use the title Theotokos. He doesn't believe there is only one person in Christ, even though he does. And he believes that Mary contained Jesus in all his fullness. God in her womb. He may not use that title. And he may recognize Nestorus. And again, he recognizes Nestorus. Okay, does that mean that he's a heretic? In your sick mind, that makes him a heretic? Okay. The Lord deal with you. Now, one more clip I'm going to play. One more clip from him. A message he shared regarding Muslims a while back. So let me get that clip, and then we're going to go into the topic. You guys okay, right? You're enjoying this? I got a lot more clips tomorrow. So I got to find that clip. It's on. This one is on Instagram. I got to find it. Instagram. Here it is. I found it. All right. Let me play it. Reload the page. Oh, my goodness. Come on, dude. I hope I found it. It was an excellent message where he was talking about the Muslims, but it says reload something wrong. Okay, let's go here. Let me see if I can do it here. Let me see if it will show up. No, it's not showing up now, huh? Darn it. Let's see. Man, I hope I find it. Oh, let's see. Yeah, I, I'll find it right here. Yeah, I found it. Muslim world. They got upset with me in that interview with Patrick with David. Here goes. It's okay. You can get upset. It's fine. Everybody's free. Let me go here. See if I can do it here. Let's play it here. I found it right here. This is what I want to say to my beloved Muslim world. They got upset with me in that interview with Patrick with David. It's okay. You can get upset. It's fine. Everybody's free. But let me tell you one thing, Listen. my beloved Muslim brother and sister in humanity. I love you and I will always love you. I pray for you and I will always continue to pray for you, whether you like me, hate me, accept me or reject me. Beside the point, you know why? Because my sweetheart, Jesus, Christ of Nazareth always taught me to love everyone and to pray for everyone, period. But let me tell you, the question that was asked in that interview with Patrick with David and all our love and regards to our beloved Patrick, we love you and may the Lord always guide you in, in, in the truth. May the Lord always guide you in the truth. But let me tell you one thing. I'm not here to debate whether your faith is right or wrong. I'm not here to say this or that, but I will say one thing to you, my beloved Muslim and to every other religion in this world, not just you, to every other religion in the world. You bring your leader and I will ask and beg my leader to come and compare your leader to my sweetheart, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and oh, let me Nestor. say what you're going to say. He's Nestor. It's not about you as a Muslim. It's about your leader. When you compare your leader, whether it's Muhammad, whether it's Buddha, whether it's Krishna, whether it's whoever it is, with all love and respect, I'm saying this. When you compare him to Jesus Christ, there is no comparison. There you go. The story. The story. Clarity. Whether you accept him as a prophet, totally different, this prophet. <laughs> Even in your book. Even in your book, he is totally different. He is the only prophet, according to your faith, 
my beloved Muslim. He is the only prophet that is referred to as the word of God. And the spirit of God. No other prophet, no Moses, no Isaiah, no Ezekiel, none of the prophets ever was mentioned of that they are the word of God. Except Isa, except Isos. And by the way, like the Isa and the Quran is not the Jesus of the Bible. Totally different. Not, nothing to do. Nothing. Two, totally two different people. Sorry, like that's the truth. And if the truth hurts, I'm really sorry, but I'm not. <laughs> So why question yourself? Why is this person, if he is a prophet only, why is he the only prophet out of the entire Old Testament prophets? Why is this prophet being referred to as the word of God and the spirit of God? How come the others didn't get this kind of a title? How come this prophet, the only prophet out of all, the only one who was born in a virginal birth. He has only earthly mother, no earthly father. These are questions you need to seek the answer to. You better believe it. But compare the life of Christ to the life of every other religious figure out there with all love and respect. Christ, I can't compare him to none of them. And let me tell you this with love. I love the Muslim. I love the Buddhist. I love the Hindus. I love all of you. But <laughs> one day we are going to face this one true divine God, whether he rewards us or judge us, it is up to him. And I'm telling you not because I have the cross around my neck, not because I have this outfit on me, not because I've read the Holy Bible, not because I am referred to as a Christian, but because I know Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Please, I know this man. No, you're a historian. You're a heretic. No, you're I know this man. You're a historian. He took me to heaven. I didn't see Muhammad. I didn't see Buddha. I didn't see Krishna. It is Jesus. Why? Because he is the only true God who was revealed in the flesh over 2000 years oh, ago. Right, he right. is the way to heaven. He is heaven. He is the rightful owner. He is God revealed in the flesh. Nothing to do with Christians, nothing to do with Muslims, nothing to do with Buddhists, atheists, you name it, nothing. It's got to do with the true divine God. For this, I'll die any minute. And he proved it. And I will always love you. Even if you come and chop my head off, exactly. I'll love you. Perfect. I'm not here to fight you. I'm not here to go against you and offend you. I'm just speaking the truth. It is Jesus. No one else. It is Jesus. No one else. And by the way, what are the Christians? What are the Christians? I want to know. This is what I want to say to my beloved. You got it. And I gave you the link. Here's the link. But no, no, no. He just said, Jesus Christ is God Almighty manifest in the flesh. So he became flesh. But no, he's Nestorian, guys. No, come on. No, you guys got to see he's Nestorian, man. When he tells you Jesus is God Almighty who manifests in the flesh, Jesus Christ is my God who became flesh, that's Nestorian talk. See, he's using the Nestorian taqiyah. Don't you understand? When he says, he means there's a divine person and a human person even though he doesn't believe that but see see how disgusting you guys sound you see how foolish and wicked and demonic you sound when you keep trying to slander this man who's doing more for jesus than you're doing for the jesus you claim is the real jesus whom you know you sit on your fat asses on your couches acting as armchair quarterback sitting in judgment of this man who affirms and loves the triune God, who glorifies the triune God, who affirms Jesus is God in the flesh. You may not like the terminology he uses, but he will not tell you there's a divine person, human person. Say, no, Jesus is one person. You may not like him using Phenoma, but Jesus is God in the flesh. And he showed that he loves the Lord. He's willing to be killed for the Lord. It's not good enough for you guys. Watch what God is going to do to you guys on the day of judgment. Yep, he said this before he got attacked, by the way. 
May the Lord grant us perfect safety, security, protection, and health to finish the race. And the Lord, please, please, see my daughters grow up and then take me home. The Lord is worthy. But anyway, these were the clips I wanted to play. Lord willing, Lord willing, tomorrow I'll play more clips from the Tucker Carlson interview with that Palestinian Christian and even clips from progressives like Chunky Yogurt who's seeing the evil, <clears throat> inconsistent, unhealthy fascination of the evangelical right for Israel at the expense of their fellow Christians. And what's disgusting, even Chunky Yogurt's TYT played a clip, Anna Kasparian. I'm going to show it to you, Lord willing, if God wills. May he give us perfect safety and health and holiness at his heart. Played a clip where she's showing images of religious Orthodox Jews attacking Christians and spitting on Christians, and they're being persecuted. What happened to you Christians, man? That you think you're doing God a favor by bending over backwards when if you tell the Jews, and by the way, Chunky Yogurt mentioned it in his criticism of John Hagee, I'm going to play the clip. He mentioned a documentary done by a Jewish woman. A Jewish woman went around interviewing, and I'm going to play the clip, Lord willing, tomorrow, if the Lord wills, and we're going to go into Trinity. I need you to listen. A Jewish woman went around interviewing these evangelical Christians who are pro-Zionist, and she wanted to know why they have a fascination with Israel and the Jews. And in that documentary, and I want to find it, Lord willing, he mentioned it. She asked the Christian, why is he supporting Israel? She goes, you really want to know? And this is Chunky Yogurt, who hates Christianity, who hates the Bible, and you're weaponizing the enemies of the gospel to slander us and attack us because you think you're doing God a favor. You know what the Christian told her? It's not we like you Jews. We really cannot stand you Jews. It's because we want to bring you into the land in order to bring about the coming of Christ. And Chunky Yogurt said, yeah, and they don't tell you that they believe that two-thirds of the Jews will be killed for Jesus to come down. See, they're on to you, Christian Zionists. And you know what Chunky Ogre said? I'm going to play the clip, Lord willing, tomorrow. You know what he said? And this is what's shocking. It comes from the mouth of an ass. One guy said, hey, uh, God even uses donkeys to speak, so he can use Chunky Ogre. No, donkeys don't want to be associated with this donkey. You know what he said? Do you know what he said? He goes, by the way, that's not a Bible teaching. He said, that's not what the Bible teaches. He's saying that's not what the Bible teaches. That's simply one interpretation of the Bible that started in the 1970s. He said it. Someone who doesn't believe in the Bible. He said it. An enemy of the gospel. Saying that's not what the Bible says. And he says it. Oh, by the way, I just want you to know, that's not the Bible teaching. That's one interpretation that was foisted on evangelicals in the 1970s. That's Chenk Yogurt of TYT, the Young Turks. I call him Chunky Yogurt. See that? Are we ready now for the Trinity in Genesis to continue where we left off? To continue where I'm going to show you where you're going to find the Trinity in Genesis. And we'll quote Jewish sources to affirm. The materials related to the session are in the description box. Okay, let me show it to you so we can begin. Lord willing, we'll have more tomorrow. If you pray for my health, if you pray for my safety, security, and my daughters, and my holiness, more importantly, my holiness, my holiness, that the Lord will empower me to be a doer of the word, that I love Jesus and obey Jesus and worship Jesus and not live a double life and never shame the Lord. And the Lord heals me and delivers me from my issues. Because without holiness, we will not see the Lord. Without holiness, we cannot stand before God. And we're going to have to plead the mercy of Jesus Christ. So by his grace and mercy, we dwell with him forever. Because if the Lord will repay me for my deeds, I'm the first to go to hell. Second would be Protestant believer. But may God have mercy on us. So now let me show you where you can find the articles, all right? And we're going to begin. I hope you are being blessed by this ministry. I really do. I pray God will confirm to me that I'm being used of the Spirit in spite of my imperfections and that God is using me to build you up and that you're falling in love with Jesus 
then I'm accomplishing my goal. And may I finish the race and glorifying the Lord. The Lord doesn't need me. You don't need me. We need the Lord. I pray he's pleased to use me and destroys my pride, my arrogance, my ego, and my self-deceit. The Lord doesn't need me, and I know he doesn't. It's an honor to use the Lord because I do want to glorify Jesus by my deeds and my service to you because Jesus says, if we love him, we'll love one another. And the way I love you is by using the gifts he's given me. So you go here, and we'll love one another. Don't you shut up, Baldy. You are handsome, though. You are a gorgeous beast. I got to admit, man, I'm getting leaner. Pray for that. All right, now, you go here. By the way, did you hear what happened to Michael Lofton, Reason and Theology? Did you guys hear? You see it here? Here are the links. Let me enlarge it so you can see. I may have to update one of them. Did you guys heard what happened to Michael Lofton, Reason and Theology? And we're going to go into the material. All right. You guys hear it? What happened to him or no? You guys saw what happened to Reason and Theology? Laugh my buttocks off. You got it, brother. He got demonetized. He got demonetized. You see why I'm not monetized? He got demonetized. And he was kind of upset about it because a great chunk of his support comes from YouTube monet monetization. He got demonetized. You see? Censorship. We ask the Holy Spirit to own this ministry and close the door of censorship. That's why I don't get monetized. But I want to glorify Jesus Christ for putting your hearts. Lord bless you, those of you who support me, PayPal and Patreon. They demonetized him. Now, the articles for this session are in the description box. I may have to update this link here. But here, you're going to see he got demonetized. You go to Reason and Theology right here. He doesn't like me. I don't like him, but put that aside. And then you go to the live right here. YouTube denied my appeal. I've been demonetized. He's been demonetized. And they denied his appeal. You got it? This is the control, the censorship. That's why I've never allowed my channel to be monetized. And I never accepted, what do they call it? What's that, how you support, what is it called? YouTube memberships or uh, super chats. And are you aware that when you contribute and give Super Chat, they take 30% of what you give. You with me there? Are you aware of that? When you give Super Chat, YouTube takes 30% of what you give. So thank the Lord I'm not monetized and I don't take Super Chat. Pray I never do. But I want to praise the Lord and thank you. If it wasn't for you giving on PayPal Patreon, you wouldn't see me because I wouldn't be able to do it. And thank the Lord I'm able to do it and take care of my family. So thank you. The Lord bless you for it. So there you go, folks. Right? YouTube membership and Super Chat. They take 30% and he's demonetized. Yep, so even Rob Christian, you see? Rob Christian just said he got demonetized. He got demonetized. So there you go. Now let's get into the meat of the matter. Let me show you the Trinity in Genesis. And we're going to work through the articles, all right? Let's go now to Bible. Oh, sorry. Thank you, brethren. In spite of my imperfection, in spite of how many times I tell the trolls, stop distracting, stay focused, I don't insult you. You think they care? Let's now go to Legacy Standard Bible because it uses a form of the, well, no, I can't use that. We'll use two Bibles. Let's use authorized King James Version. And I'm going to show you that the correct interpretation, you got to go back, rewatch all the sessions that I did on Genesis, and rewatch the ones I did on Trinity in the Old Testament and the angel of the Lord. Watch them, rewatch them, re-rewatch them to become second nature. And the way you can find my sessions on the Trinity, let's go back to my channel again. Let me show you how easy it is. So don't ask me the same question. You go here to my channel. You go to my channel here, right here. You're going to use a search engine. You put Trinity. Just put the word Trinity. Easy, right? Trinity, how can God, one God, exist as three persons? Understand the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit in the Trinity? Okay. See, I was lean here, guys. Pray I get this lean in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray I get this lean and I'm not heavier because I don't want to look like Protestant believer. Anyway, Trinity in the Old Testament, part five, part 12. See that? 
part five, part 12. Or you can do this, part three. You can put in angel of the Lord because that Old Testament angel is Jesus, not a creature. So you put angel, God, Old Testament. Angel, God, Old Testament. Bam! Sam Shimon, the angel of the Lord is God, one of three. All right. Jesus, the angel of the Lord, the witness of the early church. Bam! Bam! There you go, right? I'll be leaner than ever and not proud about it. Okay, now, so with that said, that's what you do. So don't ask me, hey, Sam, you got anything? Read it, dude. So now let's go here. I'm going to show you now Genesis 3.8. We're going to look at two versions, but I'm going to show you something. What day is it? You, me, all of the people. I'm going to compare two translations. Let's see if it's a legacy standard Bible. Or let's do a new international version. You ready? You ready now? Class has begun. We're going to go in depth. But honestly, be honest. Don't tickle my ear. Does my face still look as lean as before? Honestly, Nina, do I still look as lean as last year? Look, I don't look like I've gained weight. Come on, man. Be honest with me. Right? Look. Come on, Ishu, don't hit. Hey, I'm Chaldean Assyrian. My face still look as lean as last year? Tell me yes, please, so I can have a cheat day. <laughs> have you heard uh, when the sheep, they... <laughs> you look gorgeous too, Luffy. You say, Ricky Brown, where you been, man? Downtown Julie Brown. I don't know if I want to hit weights, man. What happened? Someone said, meet him. I'm about to bust your face, dude. But Tell me I'm not weird. I don't got mental issues. All right. Now, here, let's focus because I'm going to show you the Trinity in Genesis. So you can finish Genesis and we go into. I do that, eyes. I already do caloric deficit. I do intermittent fasting, try to stay within 1,500 calories, and I do a lot of cardio by the grace of God. Don't worry about it, be love. You want me to tell you I'm in San Diego so the Muslims come and kill me? That's what you want, don't you? What a hater. Okay, pay attention to the differences. And if you go back and watch the older sessions, I've already told you, the King James got it right. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. Now, the Hebrew can refer to sound or voice, but in the context, it should be voice. Notice it doesn't say they heard the Lord God walking. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking. The same Hebrew word, kul, is used in verse 10 and 17. But when you read other translations, look what they do. They heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking. Now, this is a major difference. It's not YouTube full-time. I do ministry full-time. I write, I research, I teach, and I do online. Okay, focus, guys, focus. Are you listening and focusing? If you translate it as they heard the sound of the Lord God walking, then you're not going to see the distinction within the Godhead. But if you render it, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking, you're going to see the distinction. Why? The author could have simply said they heard the Lord God walking. Right? But no, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Moses complicates matter because he wants you to see it's not the Lord God they heard walking. They heard the voice walking. See, that changes everything. I need you to listen. We're going to go in depth. May the numbers stay strong so you can learn the depth of Scripture. Love you, beloved. Okay, are you listening? 
We're going to go in the depths of Scripture. See, the author could have simply said they heard the Lord God walking. But no, because I'm going to show you the plurality within God from Genesis 3. I'm going to show it to you. I've done it in the past. We'll do it again. But I need you to listen because now we're going to go very in-depth. Lord willing, very in-depth. Instead, he says he they heard the voice walking. Now, that's the difference. Did they hear the Lord God walking or was it his voice? Or should it be his sound? Well, it would be redundant to say they heard the sound of the Lord God walking. Why not just say they heard the Lord God walking? Because it's not the sound of his walking they heard. They actually heard the voice walking. Because I'm going to show you that this voice is the same one we call the Word, who then becomes Jesus. They heard the voice walking. Not the Lord God, but the Lord God's voice walking. Are you with me? Exactly, we know that, Sammy, but I need you to listen. Now, let me show you how the same word is translated voice in the other instances. Here it is, Genesis 3.10. And Adam says, and I heard thy voice in the garden. Here it says, I heard you. Notice here, it's rendered voice. But in NIV, it was rendered sound. But then again, what does God say to Adam? What was his sin? Genesis 3, 17. Same word. And unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Would anyone be stupid enough to say the sound of thy wife? Because you obeyed the sound of your wife? And here, they don't even translate the word, it says, listen to your wife. And then again, in Genesis 4.10, the word is used again. Same Hebrew word, qul. God says to Cain, and he has said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me. Would anyone be stupid enough to say the sound of your brother's blood? The blood cries out to me. So are you seeing? Translations matter. Because if you render it as the voice they heard, that means God sent his voice. Someone called the voice, the one that God sends to be his voice, to speak on his behalf. And this was the voice that appeared to them walking, and they heard him walking. We got it? I'm going to show you as Jesus, brother. I will show you as Jesus. Because Jesus is the word and the voice. Now, let me show you where you need to listen. God's voice is identified is identified as God's word. Okay? You're going to see God's voice is identified as God's word. So the word of God. Oh, my goodness. Liz Myers. Liz Myers, let me know when I should shut down and retire from teaching. The, the voice of God is the word of God. The word of God is the voice of God. Why? Because what does God's word do? Reveal God. And when God wants you to know him, he sends his word. So he is the mouthpiece of God, the voice of God who makes God known. Now I'm going to show you that God's voice is God's word. God's word is God's voice. But I need you to listen. Liz Meyer says the voice of the Holy Spirit. She's killing me. Liz, let me know when I should retire from living. And I'm going to show you the Jews understood it this way as well. So if they say, well, Sam, you're just twisting the Bible. You're just reading too much theology in the Bible, fam. All right, let's see. 1 Kings 19, 9 to 13. Watch here. I'm going to prove to you the word of God is the voice of God, and it's the person whom God sends to make God known. Let me see if I can use another translation. Let's see. Too many translations, dude, and they confuse that kind of me. Let's see if we use New King James. King ain't on it. King ain't in it, son. King ain't on it. King ain't in it, mister. Exactly, K May. You're getting it. Okay, ready? Let's see if you're paying attention. Spot Elijah. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Did you catch it? 
God sent his word. The word came and the word spoke and told Elijah, what are you doing here? You guys catch it before I move on? You got it? You getting it before I move on? So the Jews knew from the Old Testament, God's word is not simply his commands or his audible voice. God's word is a person. And I've done series on this. God's word is a person who God sends and that person appears visibly to the prophets and God's people. And when they see the word, they know he's sent by God and he happens to be God. And that's from the Old Testament. And I've done sessions on these. I have articles on these. But I want you to first pay attention right here. The word of the Lord came to him. And he, the word said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Now watch who the word is. Pay attention. So he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children have forsaken your covenant, tore down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then he said, remember who the he is? The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces. Before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. You won't find God in the wind. Where will you find God? Notice how beautiful, miraculous your Bible is. And Jesus has been there from the beginning. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Now watch what shows up. After the fire, a still small voice. That's where you're going to find the Lord. Where are you going to find the Lord? Not in the earthquake, whirlwind fire. You're going to find him in this humble, gentle voice. And who or what is the voice? Let's see if you're paying attention. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in the mantle, went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Now watch. And suddenly a voice came to him and said, a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Wait, that sounds familiar. Let's see if you're catching it. Let's see if you're catching it. And there he went, 1 Corinthians, 1 Kings 19:9, into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And what did the word say? And he, the word said, What are you doing here, Elijah? But then later on, the voice said that. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Did you make the connection? Aaron, did you not listen to my session yesterday where I went through Genesis 126 and I explained already all that? It's not the angels, it's the Trinity. So did you catch here? The voice is the word. They're the same. The word of the Lord came, said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? And what did the voice say? A voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? So the word of God is the voice of God. The voice of God is the word of God. And that's the word who became flesh, Jesus Christ. You caught it? So now when we go back to Genesis 3.8 with that knowledge, let's go back to Genesis 3.8. And by the way, where do you find God? Watch here. Let's see, where do you find God? One more time. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. All right. And after the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. Where was the Lord? And that humble, gentle voice, that's where you find God. In his voice, his humble, gentle voice, his word. And who's that word? Jesus Christ. And that's why when the voice came, God showed up. Because the voice connects you to God, brings you to God. Because Jesus, the word, is the one who brings God to you and you to God. 
Suddenly a voice came to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. Are you making the connection here before I move on? Yep, Alfie. Same thing in 1 Samuel 3, 6 to 7, 20 to 21. You got it? Now, to show you that you should expect this, because what did John say? What did John say? Watch here. Look what John says about Jesus. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So before creation, the Word was there with God and as God. And who is this Word? Well, he's the one who becomes flesh, Jesus Christ. But what is his role? Look at here. No one has seen, perceived, understood God at any time. That means not even in Elijah's time or Moses' time could they perceive and know and understand God unless and until the only begotten Son came to them. So that's what John is saying. At no point in time could anyone know and perceive and understand God without the word, his only begotten son, who's in his bosom, who comes forth from him, comes to declare him. Everyone got it? Do you see it right there? In other words, if you're not getting the point, let me explain to you what John is saying. If someone read John 1 and read the first 13 verses, I'm not lying to you. I've given you verses from Jewish sources, Targums, the Old Testament. And I'm going to give you some now. If a Jew at the time of John read, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, the Jew would say, yeah, we know that. Amen. The Jew would say, we know that. And life came from that word. Yeah, we know that. They already know this. They knew this. So then what was different? The only different thing is when John says the word became flesh, that's when the Jews would say, wait, 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 hold on. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait. Okay, we're, we're with you about the word being there with God, sent by God, who reveals God and is God. That we're with you. But now you're saying that word became flesh, became human, became a man. Who is he? Jesus Christ. That's the only new thing that John 1 added. The word who appeared to our ancestors, he became human. And he's now Jesus of Nazareth. That's the only thing that would have been new. Everything else the Jew would have said, amen, amen, amen. And in case you don't believe me, let me show you other examples where the word appears. And then I'm going to show you from the Aramaic paraphrases of the Old Testament. Now that I showed you that, we can go back to the Legacy Standard Bible real quickly. Watch here. What day is it? Let's see if you catch it. You and me. Who's going to catch it? Let's see if you're paying attention. Stuff I've covered, but we're creatures of repetition. We need to hear something over and over again until it becomes second nature. Now watch. Follow me. Jeremiah 1, 4 to 11. Let's see if you're catching this. Now the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, wait, who came? The word. Who's speaking? The word. Who's appearing to Jeremiah? The word. Look what the word says. The word of Yahweh came to me, saying, before I formed you in the innermost parts, I knew you. Who's saying this? The word. The word appears to Jeremiah, saying, I created you in the womb. I made you in the womb. And I already chose you to set you apart to be my prophet. And before you came out from the womb, I set you apart. I have given you as a prophet to the nations. Who? The word of Yahweh. That sounds like John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And what does John say about that word? Let's see. Here you go. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So he's the word of God and he's God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. That word made everything. That word made Jeremiah. That word made you and me. And apart from nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And that's the word who became flesh. And the word became flesh. Yet before he became flesh, he appeared to Jeremiah and told Jeremiah, I'm the one who created you in the womb, and I already had chosen you to be my prophet. 
the word of the Lord, Yahweh, came to me. I formed you. That's John 1. Didn't we just read that in John 1? Didn't John 1 say, in the beginning was the word? The word was with God. The word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And all things came into existence by that word. Nothing came into being without him that came into being. And that word is the life that gives light to men. And here already before John, in the Old Testament, the word is appearing and telling the prophets, I'm the one who formed you. I'm the one who made you. I'm the one who's appointing you. Now look what he calls the word. Yep, Nina, you got it. You're a genius, Nina. I don't care what they say about you. You're a genius. Then I said, alas, Lord Yahweh. Wait, that sounds like John 1. The word was with God and the word was God. So the word of Yahweh is Yahweh. And he calls the word Adonai Yahuwah. Behold, I don't know how to speak because I'm a youth. But Yahweh said to me, do not say I'm a youth. Now watch. The word of Yahweh, who's Yahweh, sent by Yahweh, appears to him in visible shape and a human form, even though he hadn't become man. How do I know this? Do not say I am a youth because everywhere I send you, you shall go. Sounds like what Jesus said to the apostles. He will send them into the nations and be with them. Hmm. And all that I command you shall speak. Boy, that sounds like what Jesus said in Matthew 28. Go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them everything I've commanded you. Hmm. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. Boy, that sounds like Jesus, Matthew 28. And I'm with you always to the end of the age. Say what? Declares Yahweh. Now watch. We getting this? Now watch. Then Yahweh sent forth his hand. Wait, the word of Yahweh is Yahweh who appears in visible shape, in a visible form, where you can see his visible hand and feel his hand touch you. Then Yahweh sent forth his hand and touched my mouth. And Yahweh said to me, Behold, I put my words in your mouth. See, I have appointed you this day over the nations and over the kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to cause to perish and to pull down, to build and to plant. Now the word of Yahweh came to me saying, Uh-oh, if I didn't tell you this was Jeremiah, you'd think this was in the New Testament. Yeah, you can get the same message as NIV, but NIV is not as good. Take it easy, Jay. Take it easy. You can get the same message, man. I've told you, over 90% of the time, right, you'll find that they're in agreement because they're translating over 90% of the same text. No, VD, can you please stop that nonsense? I've spent hours and sessions, VD, Joe, to show you that Jesus allows you to see the Father and the Spirit. When you're united to Christ, the Lord Jesus, by his grace, allows you to know, see, and perceive the Father and the Spirit. Go watch my sessions on it. Okay, but anyway, do you see the word is there active in the Old Testament? And the word is the voice of the Lord. So the voice of the Lord is the word of the Lord. And that's the voice and word that became flesh, became Jesus. Don Ray, work your way up to the King James Version. If you can't understand it, use the translation. You can understand it. Work your way up. Okay, everyone got it? You got it now? All right. Another example. To show you the word has been there from the beginning. So we can go back. You guys getting this? Crystals, everyone else, or you checked out? It's still early for you to check out. Got another 30, 40 minutes, Lord willing. All right, let's see. Here's another one. Zechariah 4, 8 to 9. Zechariah 4, 8 to 9. Gabriel Green, help me to help you by not commenting. They didn't ask you. Just listen. Zechariah 4, 8 to 9. Also, the word of Yahweh came to me, saying, there it is again. It's all over your Old Testament. And he tells Zechariah, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house, and his hands will finish it. Now, here's where you're going to get blown away. Then he tells Zechariah, when Zerubbabel lays the foundation temple, then you'll know, Zechariah, you'll know that Yahweh of hosts has sent me to you. Yahweh sent me to speak to you. Sent who? 
the word of, the, of Yahweh. Yahweh of hosts sent the word of Yahweh to tell Zechariah this prophecy. That Yahweh of hosts has sent me to you. Sent who? The word of Yahweh. Zechariah 4, 8 to 9. You got it? So have I established, because I have many sessions on this. I'm just trying to get you to see the connection with Genesis. Have I established that the word of Yahweh is the voice of Yahweh, and this voice and word is a person sent by God to speak on behalf of God, who is identifying as God? Okay, DF here is going to send you out of here because you're a whore who distracts. I know you want to make love to this guy because you're gay. Get the hell out of here. Dumb little bastard. Everyone got it? Get this guy out of here. Okay. So now that we've established that, we got to use the King James Version. Okay, watch here. King James Version. Watch here. Now it's going to make sense. And then I'm going to show you the Jewish translation of Genesis into Aramaic. And do they agree with us? Do they agree with us? This voice is not God the Father, but his word. They heard the voice of the Lord God walking. Walking. But I want you to pay attention to this, the cool of the day. Because I'm going to show you the Trinity. All right. I know you guys don't believe me. So let's go here. It's all in my articles. The Targumim. The Targumim. The Targum. Let's go here. What day is it? Here you go. The Targumim. You, me. All right. Targumim. You ready? This is the English translation of the Aramaic paraphrase of the Old Testament, of the Pentateuch, done by Jews who are not Christians. Okay, you ready? Let me get you the link. You and me. Get him out of here, Nina. All of the people. Okay, you ready? All right. Now watch here. Uh-oh. Watch here. We're going to go to chapter 3. This is a Jewish explanation of the first five books of Moses done by Jews who are not Christians. Translate English. Watch here. Walking in the garden of strength of day and the word... Of the Lord called to Adam. Wait. The Jews saw that it was the word who appeared to Adam. And said to him. Behold the world which I have created is manifest before me. This is the Aramaic Targum. Of Pseudo Jonathan ben Uziel and the Jerusalem Targum. Jewish sources. And the word of the Lord called to Adam and said to him. Behold. The world which I have created is manifest before me. And how thinkest thou that the place in the midst whereof thou art is not revealed before me? What makes you think you can hide from me, dude? Who's speaking? The word of the Lord. Where is the commandment which I taught thee? Oh, but let's go a little earlier. And they heard the voice of the word of the Lord walking in the garden. Frank, please explain why the Shia, like your mother, and think she's a whore. Yeah, you're very confused, buddy. You need to get the lot of here. Go to Mike Winger. Everyone got it? Everyone getting it? Are you seeing it? These are Jews. They're not Christians. And here, let me get you the link so you can read it. It's in my articles as well. But here it is online for free. You got it? Come on, guys. All right. They heard the voice of the word of the Lord God walking in the garden. So who spoke to him? And the word of the Lord called to Adam and said to him, Behold, the world which I have created is manifest before me. How thinkest thou that the place in the midst whereof thou art is not revealed before me? And then again here, and he said, The voice of thy word heard I in the garden. I heard your word, his voice, and I heard the voice of your word walking, and I ran and hid. 
Isaac, do you want me to call the Shia on you, brother? I know you're a whore like your mother. And I know you're upset because you're a bastard whore. And the Shia jumped on you and molested you. I understand. You son of a whore. Isaac, you're a whore. No disrespect to whores. Be a man behind the screen. We got the whore manifesting in the comment section. You don't see him. Okay, everyone got it? That's what the Shia did to your mother. Everyone got it, right? Is it making sense before I move on? But now watch. Jewish source, right? All right. Okay, watch here. Let's see. Okay. Who made the garden and the tree of life? Here you go. To serve the law is better than to eat of the fruit of the tree of life, the law which the word of the Lord prepared. How about here? The word of the Lord God said, not God, but the word of the Lord God said, Behold, Adam, whom I have created, is soul in my world, as I am soul in the heavens above. It is to be that a great people are to arise from him. From him will arise a people who will know how to discern between good and evil. Hmm. How did the Jews know that God's word is a divine person, distinct from God, inseparable from God, who is sent by God, who appears to God's servants, who's the creator and life giver, savior and judge? Interesting. All right, but let's go a little earlier. Who created man? Who created man? Let's go back. And a garden from the Eden of the just was planted by who? By the word of the Lord God before the creation of the world. Interesting. Let's see here. Let's go back up. Jerusalem, Targum. And the word of the Lord created man in his likeness. The word of the Lord created man? Are you kidding me? All right. So did I establish... Even from Jewish sources, that the Jews who are not Christians, who did not believe in Jesus, who did not want to affirm the Trinity, are seeing in the Old Testament what we Christians see, the Trinity, and one of the persons whom we call the Word that became Jesus, even though they don't believe the Word is Jesus. All right. Well, hold on. I'm going to blow you away a little more. Now I'm going to show you something else. Now let's go back here. Do you see it says here, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the cool of the day. Go back and watch my previous session on Genesis. I'm going to show you a better translation, a better translation. Remember this word cool. Watch here. You're going to see the Trinity. All right. Here's the Trinity. You ready? Watch here. So you see with your own eyes and don't think I'm lying. You're gonna, I'm going to give you the link so you guys can fact check me. A better translation of this. All right. Here's your trinity right here. And then we're going to look at some Jewish sources. All right. Right here. Click here on that link so you can see with your own eyes. Now watch what it says. Okay. Kul or kul. Voice, Yahweh Elohim. Mithalik. Now, but watch here. I want you to see something. Do you see this word here, the breeze of the day? You see it says, La Ruach. L-A-R-U-A-H. Ruach. Hayom. By or with the spirit of the day. The day. The word, La Ruach, literally means by the spirit of the day. Let's look at it. La Ruach. What's the word ruach? Breath, wind, spirit. Notice here ruach is the same word used in Genesis 1-2. The spirit of God. Did you catch it? Literally it is. They heard the voice walking with the spirit of the day. That's what it literally says. 
the voice appeared with the spirit of the day. What does that mean? Jesus, the word, never works apart from the spirit, is always working with the spirit to bring us out of darkness into light. So the spirit of the day means the spirit who brings you into the day out of the darkness. Let me show it to you. So let's go back here. Right here, Genesis 1, 2 to 5. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit, Ruach Elohim, so God and his spirit are working to make earth living, habitable, and then light will shine in the darkness of the world, and that light will be called day. The spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light, and that it was good. And God divided light from the darkness, and God called the light day. So it's the Spirit of God who, with the Word of God, brings you out of your darkness into the light, into the day. That's why it says, the voice came, la ruach hayom, with, by, the Spirit of the day. Because Jesus is working with the Spirit to bring you out of darkness into the light, into the day. That's what Genesis 3.8 literally says. Literally says. Here. So let me show you a better translation. So let's, let's take these words, and I'm going to show you the Greek. The voice of the Lord was walking. So we'll say the voice, they heard the voice walking, in or with the spirit of the day. Because the word cool is ruach. Again, in case you don't believe me, there's your trinity. God sent forth his word, his voice, with the spirit. Because Jesus shows up with the spirit. And with the spirit, saves you out of darkness and brings you into the day. Okay? Here you go. That's trinity right there. So far with me? I don't know why they translated cool, uh, Charles. That's their bias. Because Charles, watch again, so you don't think I'm lying. That's their bias, because they don't want to read too much Trinity in the Old Testament. Why not? If it's there, it's there. Listen, you whore. Go find your mother, you bastard. You stupid whore. The bastard is manifesting like his whore mother. Yeah? Keeps manifesting. Right here in my... Stream yard. Here it is. La Ruach Hayom, the day. Okay, here's the word Ruach. Am I lying? Let's see. La Ruach. Boom. It's spirit. Ruach. And the word Ruach is used here. Genesis 1, 2. And Genesis 3, 8. But it's also used in Genesis 6, 3. My spirit. So La Ruach means with or by the spirit. So literally, it's. The voice, the voice was walking. The voice appeared and they heard the voice walking as he was accompanied with by the spirit of the day because it's a spirit who brings you out of darkness into the day. You understand? So literally, this is how you should translate it, Genesis 3, 8. Okay. They heard the voice walking with the Spirit who brings us out of darkness and into the day. Okay? Everyone got it? Focus, Lars. Are you getting it? So why don't they translate it? Because they don't want to read too much Trinity in your Bible. Because they don't want to get backlash by disbelieving Jews or academia. Come on, man. You think they knew the Trinity? You can't even prove the Trinity from the New Testament, let alone the Old Testament. You see? That's pretty much the reason, in my estimation. 
Charles, do I need to repeat myself five more times, Charles? Let's try it again before I block you. Charles, what part are you not getting that they don't want to read too much Trinity in the Old Testament because they don't want to be accused of bias by disbelieving Jews or by liberal academia who don't even think the New Testament teaches the Trinity? Charles, should I repeat it again and get you out of here and send you Mike Winger? You get it? Okay, Kevin, when the voice shows up, he shows up to speak on God's behalf, to represent God, and where the Son is, the Father is. Did not Jesus say that? He who sees me sees the Father. So that means when the voice shows up with the Spirit, the voice is now giving you access to the Father, and the Father is speaking through his voice, so they're all being represented. Didn't Jesus say that in John? He who sees me sees the Father because the Father is in me and I am the Father. Come on, dude. Wake up. You getting it? Did it sink in? So I can give you Jewish sources to prove my point? Okay, now I'm going to show you an article I wrote. If you go back and watch my series on the angel of the Lord, you got to watch those series. There is an angel in the Old Testament who's not a creature because the word angel means messenger. A messenger can be a heavenly messenger or a human one. There's one particular angel who's not a creature, who's a messenger set by the Father, who is God, does things that God does. Others worship him as God, and he becomes Jesus. Yep, Adonis, you're getting it. Because now I'm going to show you more proof the Trinity is there. Okay, now let's go to my article. Let me show you how to find it. So when you go here, man, this fly. Yeah, it's killing me. So you see I put in, in the search engine, Angel of God. Go watch the series to prove it's Jesus and he's not a creature. But now if you go to my live, watch here. Let's go to the section here. You're going to go down here. Okay. And you're going to click on one of these articles. Let's see which article we're going to click on. Go away from my window. Now, let's look at this article. You want more proof the Trinity is there? Here you go. Here it is. Go away from my window. You ready? You guys bored or you're enjoying this? Losing, folks. I hope not. I hope it's not because you're tired of me. May the numbers increase for the glory of the Lord. Now, you want me to prove to you that the Trinity is there? The Trinity is there. You ready? I don't know why they're screaming. I hope they're okay. Let me see what's going on here. Because then I'm going to give you Jewish sources, and I may be done. I may not need to do another part. I may, I may not need to. We'll see. We'll see how much we cover now. People are screaming. I just want to see if everyone's okay. Hold on, dude. What's going on here, dude? All right, maybe not. Maybe I'm okay. All right, now, you ready? Okay. This article is in the description box. Now watch. Let me prove it to you. All right. Genesis 3, 5, Genesis 3, 22. Watch here that here you have proof the Trinity is there. And make sure to watch yesterday's part where I even showed you the early church writers and fathers all agreeing unanimously that these passages are referring to the Trinity, not God speaking to the angels. But anyway, for God knows, Genesis 3, 5, that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, ke Elohim, knowing good and evil. Now here, knowing is plural. Literally, it's you'll be like God. Which God? The God. Those who know good and evil. It's plural. Speaking of God in the plural as being more than one person. And to prove that God is more than one person, not more than one God, watch here. Then the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now, let me prove to you that here it's the Trinity being represented, not God speaking to angelic creatures. Why? It says, The man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. So they were now like God because God, they know good and evil. 
So they became like God and that they too started experiencing good and evil. All right. Now, what's the proof that this is referring to the Trinity? Here you go. 2 Samuel 14, verse 17 and 20. The angel of the Lord is not a creature. This angel is God, sent by God who becomes Jesus. Now, let me see if you catch it. Now, here, David is being buttered up. David is being buttered up and being praised. They're trying to flatter David in order to win David's favor. So how do they flatter him and butter him up? By likening him to the angel of God. How? Let's see. And your handmaid thought, the word of my Lord, the king, you, David, my Lord, the king, will set, set me at rest. For my Lord, the king, is like the angel of God. Behold, the man has become like one of us. David is like the angel of God, ke malach ha Elohim, to discern good and evil. Sound familiar? Adam and Eve have become like one of us, knowing good and evil. So who is the us? You, David, you're like the angel of God who discerns between good and evil. Damn. So the angel of God is part of the us? Because the angel of God with the Father and the Spirit knows good and evil? And he knows what takes place on earth? Yeah. The Lord God, the Lord your God be with you. In order to change the course of affairs, your servant Joab did this. But my Lord has wisdom. Like the wisdom of the angel of God, you're you're like him. Now, this is flattery. Malachalim, to know all things that are on earth. In other words, like the angel of God, who knows everything that takes place on the earth, who knows between good and evil, David, you become like him. Wait, if the angel of God discerns and knows between good and evil and knows what takes place on earth, then you just prove that here the Lord God is speaking not of creatures, but of the Trinity. Behold, the man has become like one of us. Who's the us? I, the angel and the spirit, knowing good and evil. You got it? Did I just show you that? So who's the us? The Lord God. Why us? Because it's God. The angel of God and the spirit. And the angel is also the word of God. See, you, David, are like the angel of God. Because the angel of God discerns between good and evil and knows everything that takes place on earth. Do we make the case or no? We're almost done. I'm going to probably do a part six because I want to read through the Jewish sources. But before I do, everyone got it? And in this article, I show you the places where the angel of the Lord is set to be God, not a creature. In here, this article. And does the things only God can do, and he becomes Jesus. Okay? It's right there. It's all there. And I showed the Holy Spirit is God who knows everything. Look, the Holy Spirit. Does he know everything? Yeah, Isaiah 40, 13 and 14. Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord? In other words, these are rhetorical questions. Can you direct him, guide him, tell him where to go, what to do? No, because he knows everything. He tells you. Or as his counselor has instructed him. Can you instruct the Holy Spirit? Spirit of the Lord? Whom did he consult for his enlightenment? And who taught him the path of justice and taught him knowledge? Showing him the way of understanding. Nobody, because he's all-knowing. He's the one who teaches us. There's your trinity, folks. Did Nicole, like the JWs say that your mother is a Mormon whore? The, the JWs say your mother is a Mormon whore. So like your mother... You're a Mormon whore, you dumb bastard. Anyone, everyone got it, right? Okay. So do you understand the early church was right? It is the Trinity, not God speaking to the heavenly host. We got that part? Because now I'm going to show you Jewish sources. I'm going to show you Jewish sources. We got it? All right. Again, if you go here, what the heck is this, mister? Darn you. Let's go to my channel. You go to my link again. I'm going to show you the other article. Come on, man. What's this? Why is that popping up? Can you tell me? 
I'm confused. Why the hell is that popping up? Why is Chunk Yogurt popping up? All right. Anyway, we go here. Let me show you the article. Get ready now. This all inscription box, you see it? Okay, let's go here. You ready? Let me show you this article here. We're going to look at these two articles. Article here, one. That one here. You see this? Trinity and Aramaic Targums. These are the Jewish translations of the Old Testament by Jews who are not Christians. Okay, now, but before we do that, I want to click on another one. Let me click on another one. Let me show you another one. Can you show guys explain to me why this is popping up? Oh, because I'm stupid, because I'm looking at the wrong one. All right, sorry, guys, because I'm kind of slow. Die from my window. Let's go here. La, 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 la. Here, this one here. La, 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 la. Here's another one. Get ready. Here's the other one. La, 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 la. It's all in the description box. Chunky yogurt. Pray my face gets leaner and I look leaner and I don't look like Protestant believer. All right, you ready to get blown away? This is an Aramaic paraphrase of Genesis done by Jews who are not Christians. Done by Jews who are not Christians. Are you ready? No, Levi. That's modalist heresy, Levi. You're a heretic and I'm going to condemn you and block you. When you say body, spirit, and soul, you're still one person. So you're just arguing for modalism, which is a heresy. Stop chiming in, Levi. You're going to embarrass yourself. All right, here you go. The Targum Neophyte. You can read it online for free. Now, let me show you something. Are you ready? Go away from my window. Here it is in front of your eyes. La, 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 la. Let me just put it one more. Okay, do you see it in front of your eyes? You see what it says online for free? Okay. Is it clear or do I need to enlarge it? From the beginning with wisdom, the Son of the Lord perfected the heavens and the earth. Here, let me enlarge it. Let me see if you see it. Wait, this is a Jewish source. This is not a Christian source. This is not written by Christians. This is written by Jews. From the beginning, with wisdom, the Son of the Lord perfected the heavens and the earth. How did they know God has a son, and this son is the one that God used to fashion and perfect the heavens and the earth? See it? I can't, if I enlarge anymore, you can't see. You see it? This is not Proverbs 30, Squeezy. This is Genesis. Stop trying to help me. Yeah, this is Targum Neophyti. I just gave you the link, and I quote it in my article. So in my article, you'll see it. So I gave you the link, so you don't think I'm making it up. Here it is. I just quote it. See? You go there. You read with your own eyes. But you go here. This is what it says. From the beginning, with wisdom, the Son of the Lord created the heavens and the earth. How do they know that? They're not Christians. And the Aramaic says, Bara di Yahweh, the son of the Lord, Yahweh. Everyone got it? The Jewish source. But wait, can I use this to show the Trinity? Here's what the footnote says. This is the footnote to this. The word Memra Logos is probably missing in the text. See, they're even like confused. Like, what? How can it say, from the beginning, with wisdom, the Son of God fashioned the heavens and the earth? So they're thinking, maybe the copyists made a mistake. See, conjecture. They don't know how to deal with this. The word Memra, that's Aramaic for word, which in Greek is Logos, is probably missing in the text. As a hand has erased the wall of Shekel, and therefore, one should translate from the beginning 
The word of the Lord with wisdom created and perfected the heavens and the earth. Even if you have the word, it's still Jesus. But that's not what it says, like what I say here. The problem with the foregoing assertion is that the Aramaic has the phrase, bara di Yahuwah. It literally says, bara, that's Aramaic for the son, di Yahuwah of Yahweh. That's what it says. And this is where I quote Proverbs 30, friend. It's already there. You caught it? But are there other verses in this Targum where you see the Trinity? Yep, here it is. I'm quoting from the Targum here. Let's see if you can see it. Let me enlarge it. Okay, let's see if you see it. See, I can't do any better because if I do too big, you can't see it. Can you see this? Okay. And the word of the Lord said, let there be light. And there was light according to the decree of his word. So who's creating? The word of the Lord. These are Jews, folks. It's right there. These are Jews, folks. The word of the Lord said, let there be light. And there was light according to the decree of the Lord. But hold on. There's the Trinity here because it says, and a spirit of love before the Lord was blowing over the face of the waters. So you have the Son of God, the Word of God, and the spirit of love blowing on the waters in love. And the Word of the Lord called the light day and the darkness, right? Night. The Word of the Lord said, let there be the firmament in the waters. But now when we go over here, let's see here. I got to see if I can find. Let me see. Oh, we got to go down here. Yep, I got to go to the next page. So next page. That's chapter 2. Where's 126? I'm trying to find 126. Sorry, guys. Oh, I got to go this way. Okay. okay. Now watch here. Watch here, guys. Who created man? Who created man? 25, and the word of the Lord created the beasts of the earth according to their species, right here. And the cattle according to their species. And everything that creeps upon the earth according to their species. Who did it? The word of the Lord. And it was manifest before the Lord that is beautiful and good. Now watch here. And the Lord said, let us make, create man in our image. In our image, similar to ourselves. Let him have dominion over the fishes of the sea. And over birds of the heavens, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Now watch. And the word of the Lord created the Son of Man in his own image. And a resemblance from before the Lord, he created him, male and his partner, he created them. So the word of the Lord did it. But then you have the glory of the Lord blessed them. And the word of the Lord said to them, well, that's two, glory and the Lord. And the glory, Shekinah, Shekinah is identified with the Spirit. And the glory of the Lord said, behold, I've given you all, right, the herbs. Are you catching this, folks? There you go. Are you seeing this? All of this is in the article. It's right here in the article. All of this. Spirit of love from before the Lord was blowing. And the word of the Lord said to the decree of his word. And the Lord said, let us create man in our image similar to ourselves. Similar to ourselves. That's from Targum Neophyte. And the word of the Lord created the Son of Man. And the glory of the Lord blessed them. And the word of the Lord said to them. And the glory of the Lord. Now watch here. You want to get blown away? Genesis 2. And they completed the creatures of the heavens and the earth. They, not him. Who? They, the Lord. The word of the Lord and the glory of the Lord. Okay. In fact, here, that Genesis 2, right? So I say, notice the use of the plural, they. I will do another part tomorrow, but I just want you to see it with your own eyes. So you don't think I'm lying. Let's see if we can get two here. Watch here, if you can get it. You see it? There goes the day. And they, see it? 
The Jews hope you don't know about this stuff, dude. Tovia Singer hopes you don't know about this stuff, dude. He doesn't want you to know because this is humiliating. Jews are not Christians. Reading the Old Testament without the New Testament, and they can see the plurality of divine persons in the Old Testament. You understand now, Lepanto? Your church, the ancient church, always got it right. The God of the Bible is the Trinity, and the early church fathers were right. Modern scholarship can stick it where the sun don't shine. We got it? Now, we'll do another part tomorrow, Lord willing. Folks, this is Jewish sources. I haven't even gotten into the other Targums. All the links to the articles are in the description box. Lord willing, we'll do a final one, and we'll be done with this series of Genesis. But I need your prayers. We're done right now, Lord willing. We had a good crowd. Prayer numbers increased, not for my praise. Good to see you, Mr. Anna. Love you, brother. Noah, all of you, Athea. But I need your prayers. If you believe the Lord has called me to ministry, that's what you believe. I need you prayer warriors, those who've been gifted to pray and intercede. Pray for my daughters and I day and night. Ask the Lord to grant all of us miraculous safety, security, protection, health, to be bold even unto death and give me many years to see my daughters grow up and fall over Jesus and I die in their hands. Lord, bring them to me. Remove Simon, Martin, Simon from their lives, this wicked adulterer. Ask the Lord to give me discipline to get healthier, more fit, to break my bondage to lust, to keep pure until marriage, to food addiction, and be disciplined spiritually and physically and worship the Lord and praise the Lord and love the Lord and obey him. And my daughters be in love with the Lord. And if the Lord tarries, I die in their arms when they grow up. And I'll be here to serve you until then. I'll be writing articles. I'll be doing sessions. And I will be covering a variety of topics as the Spirit leads me and guides me and owns me and owns you. But right now, we'll end it here. You guys got it? Everyone got it? Martin Simon Yako is the adulterous pig who my ex-wife... Married in adultery, because she's in adultery, she hasn't repented. Ask the Lord to rebuke her so my daughters will be set free from her clutches, because she's influencing them, and they've been deceived by her, and I haven't been in their lives for a while. But brethren, you got the materials, the articles, rebuttals. Upload these clips. My sessions, you can upload them entirely or in clips. Translate them, but you're going to have to honor the Lord by making sure you understood what you saw, heard, and read, and not misinterpret and not explain erroneously, right? And make sure you've understood it and share it accurately for the glory of Christ. I'm your servant until the, the Lord returns. I love you for the sake of the Lord. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love the Holy Spirit. Seal us by the Spirit. Fill us with the Spirit. To be holy and obedient and love you, Lord Jesus, by obedience. And grant me the grace to get healthier and bring my daughters to me and enable me to finish the race and bless your people that we die in union with you or remain faithful until you return and return sooner than later. We need you. We depend on you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maranatha. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Lord willing, see you tomorrow. God bless you.